What is up, everyone? This is your boy, the Cannon Junkie. I am here on another lovely, lovely Bombad Friday with my one and only, my, well, I mean, you know, maybe not my one and only, but but definitely uh, one of the one and only. You guys know how we operate. Here he is, uh, my lovely co-host and friend, Scotty J. Rowe. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. I really am upset that the the virus delayed our wedding, but you know the one and only thing's going to happen wow, inevitably. Yeah. And well, and I haven't told my wife yet either. So yeah, no, we'll no. Nope. Have to and see how that goes. It's going to be cool with Eleanor with two dads. I'm really excited for that. It's going to be fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we are just really throwing um, our guest today uh, into the deep end. He might be with, the third dad our, after this. Uh, we'll, we'll find well, out. We'll see. We'll have to see. Uh, we have uh, none other than. Just I don't know what one of the the great pontificators in this uh, Star Ooh. Wars discussion world I would say, uh, and it is none other than Mr. Ken Knapsack of the Force Center podcast. Uh, Ken, how you doing tonight, man? Good to have you. I am uh, great. I'm having a bomb bag great time. Misa, happy yeah. to be here. All those good things. I'm sure all your guests <laughs> have said before, but no, no, thanks for having me on. This is going to be fun. Oh no! It, this is going to be fantastic. This is, I, I really can't wait. Just because <laughs> I'll take that. This this discussion I, is almost catered towards your your aesthetic and your thing. So I'm mm. I'm I can't wait to deep dive and and Jerry, what is why, why Ken for this particular show? Why did we bring Ken Napsock, the one and only new member of the one and only club, into this show? Well, we're talking uh, about a, a subject that we all enjoy, Scott. It is Star Wars, and uh, you know, Scott is. What? Uh, you will, uh, Ken is a big Star Wars fan, so I thought he might enjoy this. But uh, more than that, we're we're talking about uh, something that uh, Ken has actually wrote a book kind of on the same kind of subject, and uh, it is a, a lovely, lovely read called "Why We Love Star Wars." And uh, seriously, uh, I don't know. There, there are moments in Star Wars. There are moments that you find uh, that that really just kind of hit you without you even knowing. It could be something insignificant that like means nothing to someone else, but to you, you see this this moment hits in whatever movie, uh, cartoon, whatever you're watching, playing, whatever, reading, and in your gut, you know, wow, this is this is why I, I like Star Wars. This is this is Star Wars. This is the DNA of what Star Wars is. And, and so again, why why would we not have uh, the great Ken Knapsack on to to talk about the DNA of Star Wars and and just the smaller moments again uh, that that he wrote about in his book, why we love star Wars. I don't know. Ken, I don't know if you want to kind of uh, talk a little bit more about what drove you to, uh, or what really kind of uh, led you to writing that, that book. But uh, I don't know what you, why don't you go ahead and uh, enlighten us, sir? Yeah, well, I, I, years ago, I mean, I grew up, you know, like everyone, uh, a Star Wars fan came early into my life and, um, you know, I was a born in the 70s, child of the 80s. And it was a, it was what I gravitated more than any other properties other than like one year. I love Robotech probably more than Star Wars uh, and still do love Robotech. But uh, no, <laughs> in my love of Star Wars, like a lot of people goes just beyond all the big things. But I'm pulled in by the big theme themes and, and lessons in Star Wars, which are part of that DNA. But what brings me back are often those little moments. And, and I had done a podcast, an episode of Spotlight Star Wars Gosh, I think around a little after Rogue One, Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was the 50th episode of that particular program on Force Center. And it was like, oh, let me do the 50 things I love about Star Wars and or something like that. And I I just kind of scribbled down on a post it, a couple of post-it notes, a list of 50, 50 things. And uh, it wasn't big. It was some of them were giant moments, but a lot of them were little tiny things. And so when it, years years later, um, when I got the opportunity to to write the book for Mango Publishing, 
uh, you know, Star Wars made sense for me to, to write about. Um, and I wanted it to be very personal from my point of view and journey, but I felt that was a shared journey. And part of that shared journey is those little tiny moments. The best example I can, I can give uh, is the uh, seismic uh, charges, the the, the yeah. seismic charges from uh, Jango Fett's ship and Attack the Clones. That was just the, one of those moments. It's, it's just Star Wars. It's pure Star Wars. It's just a sound effect. It's Ben Burtt's genius. It's all those things. And that just makes you kind of get those little nerd chills of like, oh, I love I love that little moment. Yeah. So no matter what you think about the movie or this or that or the moment, and there's a lot of those little things, but a lot of them are, are bigger moments, small moments that mean bigger things. And so I love talking about that. I love sharing my experiences with those and connections to those moments. And everyone has them, you know, it, it's yeah. like literally I was at my cousin's the other night um, and we were we were getting Easter eggs, you know, prepared for his son. Mm. And we literally just went through Disney Plus just the moments, you know, you know, mm. I see that you've been trained well, but you're no Jedi yet. Like that moment and Empire Strikes Back. Mm. It's just like all of it, like it, just those small moments that for some reason just like boom, right. just a punch and like. I don't, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't have to make you tear up, but it can definitely just like hit you and you're like, maybe that's what you needed to hear that day. And it's just, it's, it's yeah. wild. I don't know. It's, it's something that I feel like if you're a Star Wars fan, you see it, but like, you know, if you're not, if you're not super deep into it, you still, you still feel that moment some way. Mm-hmm. And it might not be the seismic mm-hmm. charges, Ken, but it could definitely be, you know, whatever but, moment. But can we know? all can we all agree that the seismic charge is at least the coolest sound effect in Star Wars, maybe? I don't is that too is that too big right now, maybe? I don't know. I, that's it's a big my favorite sound. It's yeah, it's always I'm been my you. favorite sound effect. Yeah. That's yeah, definitely that's an interesting discussion because my favorite sounds the Naboo blaster. The one whatever one Padme uses mm. in the Phantom Menace. I don't know why. <laughs> the it's one like that they fire five hundred times to blast open the window. Or, or right. last time I watched, I noticed like Panaka takes five thousand shots at the window to knock out one small panel. Yeah. Padme yeah. Up, upstairs knows the proper, uh, you know, direction, like angle and stuff, I guess. To, like she in one shot, like blows she's out. She's a queen. On top. She's a queen. She's the queen. That's why she's the queen, man. Uh, so there you go. Um, <laughs> that's a good that's a good one, though, Scott. I like yeah. that. I like that. Sound no, effect. But we're not here to talk about sound effects necessarily. <laughs> not yeah, just sound right. effects. I guess you're right. But, yeah. I don't know. but you know, I, I wanted to ask one thing of Ken, you know. Mm-hmm. Before this, because if I'm not mistaken, didn't Why We Love Star Wars come out before the Rise of Skywalker? Right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it was finished be, uh, before that and Mandalorian. Yeah. Would mm-hmm. you go back and maybe add something to it? Uh, if yeah, if it was uh, it was if it was possible, uh, obviously a publisher decision. Uh, you know, we we kind of the timing of my life after I got laid off from my uh, job at uh, Collider and I just, you know, wanted to kind of take my career in another direction or at least add a little wrinkle to it. And, and this book came, came about. So it was like, we didn't want to wait. We, we just felt, um, you know, if I felt episode nine was the last thing that was ever going to be out about star Wars, it might've made sense to wait. But we just, I just, you know, knew at the time, uh, not only were Mandalorian, uh, Cassian uh, announced and Mandalorian on the way, Nine on the way, yeah. and, you know, I, I knew stuff about the Kenobi TV show and some other things coming down the pipeline where it's like, this, this is not going to stop. So we might as well just <laughs> capture what's going on right now. Yeah, right. definitely. Definitely. Because there's one on my little list that I got that's like, I, I know mm-hmm. everyone can relate to it. Just like that mm-hmm. moment in particular. But yeah, no, I guess we should right. jump into it, boys. So... Sure. For our listeners, what we're, what we're going to do, okay, we're going to end up kind of doing like a round robin of sorts where, you know, I'll state mine, then, you know, Ken will state his, then Jerry will state his, and we'll just kind of, and we'll bounce off ideas as well. So stay stay tuned for the ride. And, you know, this weird thing of the Star Wars DNA, it, it can be defined differently by each of us, you know. I'm a child of the prequels. Um, I went through college during the sequel trilogy. And, you know, like some of the moments may be brought on by where you were, you know, and what age you were. So I'm very interested to hear with where we go with this, because Attack Mm. of the Closed Seismic Charge, I remember hearing that and I was eight years old. I was really little. You know what I mean? Which might be different for Jerry, which would be different for Ken. Mm -hmm. 
What do you yeah. want to say, Jerry? <laughs> well, I, I, well, I was, yeah, you can see it on my face, man. Um, I, 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 all I want to say is I've never heard the phrase "round robin" before. Really? And so that's that's what interested me about all that. Um, it's a teacher I mean, thing. I'm is sorry. that is that like slang for Red Robin employees for someone who stayed a little too long, got a little too many extra yes. plates of fries? All right, we got another round robin. All right, roll them out the back. All right. I, I guess I should have. Um, I'm a teacher, by the way, Ken. Like. I didn't know if. I had mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, so Good. so I don't teach the little kids, but it's, it's it's actually a method of like reading for kids. It's really funny. I and I completely oh, yeah. just that's, spewed that, that off. That's, like, so that's what I know. I did that. You, you like go around the room yes. and stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I just I didn't know there was a name in, for it. Yeah, I competed in round robin baseball tournaments, so that yeah. makes sense. Okay. Just a bunch of teams playing each other. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. You know, we're gonna. Yeah. Well, I'm there for that. I was right, just gonna. Right. Send I'm a copy the only of... uncultured one. Then it's okay. Yes. It's all right. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna send a, a, a copy of Green Eggs and Ham, and we were gonna do that instead for this episode. But I thought, you know, nice, this would be nice. better. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a large <laughs> yeah. print edition. Here. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because of you know, we're all adults. We need the we need the best copy of it. But so yeah. I guess to kind of get into it. All right. Um, who wants to go first? Does anyone have a want to volunteer this whole thing? Or Jerry, do you want to? You know start what? It? You know what? I'll kick this pig. All right, Let's cool. Do it. All right. So, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I I have a bunch of weird moments. I, I also have, quite frankly, a lot of. Uh, I mean, you can see we're the Bombad cast. Um, we're we're not shy with the Phantom Menace and stuff like that. Phantom Menace is actually mm-hmm. my favorite prequel. I have at yeah. least two okay. from the Phantom Menace. Um, and I think I probably, if I sat down and like, if we had more time, I would probably just pontificate. And I'm using that word again because I want to sound smart uh, on just all of the moments from that. But I think I got to go with my first one here. When Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan ignite their sabers in that dioxys gas, like when the whole oh, yeah. moment from when the droids like come up and surround the door and all that, uh, you've got uh, they're talking to Newt. Uh, on the things like, you know, destroy what's left of them and stuff. And they're all like, ah, check it out, Corporal, Roger, Roger. This, that whole moment, the buildup. And to see the lightsabers ignite yeah. in that gas was just kind of a cool moment. And, and Scott, you know, we did our, uh, Ken, we did a, a big, uh, a giant uh, undertaking Unbelievably last difficult. Uh, <laughs> uh, October through December uh, in lead up to Rise of Skywalker. We did like what we called the Bombad buildup where we basically mm. watched and straight up analyzed every single movie very every uh, meticulously, scene. almost nice. every frame. Uh, and we basically created five audiobooks. So uh, <laughs> that's much. out there. That's out there. <laughs> But Phantom Menace, man, made me realize. I think it. I think it was the, that I like, like beamed that movie into my brain for mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. first episode. Mm-hmm. That made me mm-hmm. really realize how much I loved. Just like, and, and I remember I was twelve. I was what I, again? What I call the George Lucas sweet spot. Whenever Phantom Menace mm-hmm. came out, man. Um, right. Sounds kind of gross. I was too. sitting there in the theater, George man. Lucas sweet spot. Sorry. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, the George Lucas sweet spot. You got it. all right. All right. All right. No, um, you've got all these years watching the VHSs, even the special editions and stuff, and, and, and all this stuff. We, you know, Luke's the only Jedi we've ever seen. Now we get to see these Jedi, like, cutting loose, like, kicking some serious, you know, metal, metal butts around uh, this, this hallway. Uh, and I don't even care that they that they can run fast in that one moment mm. and don't ever do it again because it's like... I. They needed to do it at the time. I don't know. It's just there. Everything from when they ignite their sabers, just th- just that moment though. If we're talking about Star Wars DNA moments, for me, is just uh, every time. Like every time I see that now, like you know the the and I just got you know again. I just risked life, limb, and marriage to get that 4K uh, box set recently, <laughs> and so. Um, so if the if there is a divorce, I get that at least. Um, yeah, definitely. But, uh, no, I, rewatching those things again, man. Just that moment. It, it it's one of the. It just I feel it, it deep in my gut. You know, there's that like swell of joy or whatever that that like holy crap. Uh, here we go. Yeah. Here we are. Well, and I, man, I don't know. You guys talk now. You guys talk. 
I I love the lightsaber in the door. Like that 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 scene itself with the music. Oh, it's just like plunging. Oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. Mm. Oh man, it's I love killer. that they're like close the blast doors with that, and it's like okay, we got him, and then he yeah he plunges. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keeps yeah. going through. Starts melting. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it's awesome. It's just yeah. I love so much about the Phantom Menace. I don't know. It's just it's a special one for me. So. It's all good. We just ranked uh, our favorite lightsaber moments, not mm. our fights, but our favorite lightsaber moments, and, and that Qui-Gon one was uh, number five on my list. Uh, it's because, and from my perspective, being a little bit older, seeing those movies and, and, and having a, a very interesting journey with those movies to the point where, where I am now, where, you know, Force Center, we have the phrase uh, prequelists and all those kind of things going right, on, yes. but, like... Um, that moment, it, 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 seeing what you're describing, is is the fulfillment of, of what Obi Wan Kenobi had said, which is you know for over a thousand generations, uh, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of, of peace and justice in the galaxy. We got to see that in that moment. So right away, you're just like, oh, this is this is different. We are fully formed. Uh, those robes mean they're not hiding out. They are in. That's their uniform, and they're going. Uh, they have the the humble attire of a, of a moisture farmer, and right. they are heading out in the galaxy. <laughs> um, and it was good. And, and we saw a bunch of things we hadn't you know running fast and and the and the blade into the into the the blast door like yeah this was like all skills were 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 in use here and uh, that was that was a lot of fun to watch then and definitely uh definitely fun to watch now i, I haven't seen it in 4k yet uh you know i'll work on that'll save my allowance but um yeah i, I told i'm right right with you on that moment yeah yeah I, i'm but a human i am but human so don't worry about it even though i have seen it in 4k i'm the same as all of you so Maybe. Come on down the mountain and join yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, I'll come down <laughs> off a of 4K mount, mountain. Yeah. 4K mountain. No, <laughs> it's like a run. Everything no. just looks better from up here. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> to your point, so, Kim, like just to have that reveal happen too, you know, with mm-hmm. like just the smoke and everything, Jerry, and then the lightsabers go up. It's the first time we ever saw that. Like it being, you know, I mean, yeah. I think if our strikes back, we had a little bit of fog, but like seriously seeing it in this movie and it just, it, they improved the lightsaber so much by then. Like it wasn't just a, you know, a roto thing on a stick. It, it probably had gotten a little right. bit more advanced. So it's just, I don't know that, that whole and people like this team. Some people don't like the Phantom Menace, and I respect that. But it's like, undeniably, that is so Star Wars. Like through and through that moment, was, literally, probably until you meet Jar Jar is like, you know, this is the pacing of the movie is killer until just about that. At least it was I mean, not to me, but I'm sure for some people. But yeah, it's like the best rock concert opening ever. You know, like that smoke <laughs> and everything, and then everyone like comes out. So uh, it was like Kiss was about yes. to open up. You know, so there you go. There Absolutely. You go. Yes. Um, what were you gonna? What are you gonna say, Scotty? What were you gonna say, buddy? No, I'm sorry. I, I'm just thinking about Paul Stanley because you mentioned Kiss and oh, Ken. Uh, I don't yeah, know Paul, if you know oh, this. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and let Ken. Yeah, in. Paul Stanley uh, is our second. is our neighbor, and he occasionally shows up on um on Bomb what? Badcast. Yeah. So that's that's awesome. He's, Every he's like then. the Wilson. He's like the Wilson of our That's home great. movement. I'm a big Kiss <laughs> fan. I, I saw them in concert '96 at the Irvine Amphitheater. I was dressed as Peter Chris, but uh, oh, definitely nice. uh, Kiss and Paul Stanley. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we he might. Well, I don't if, know if Peter Chris's uh, Folgers commercial is as good as Paul Stanley's, but that's true. he's got a pretty good one. So that's true. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, Jerry, who, anyway, who should go next? I, you can choose. Oh, I get to pick. Yes. Oh man, uh, Scotty, why don't you why don't you go ahead and, and lay one on us, and we'll we'll let our uh, esteemed guest go go last. Let them stew. We don't really care. What do you think? <laughs> okay, I guess I can kind of play to the Phantom Menace only because I don't know. It's re- it really fits, and like G- George is always about anthropology, and like you know he loves culture and seeing culture like move in in in, in its moment. That's why a lot of the prequels has so much fluff in the scenes, just people, you know, so many Rontos and just people just walking for the camera and stuff. It's just George, you know, he loves just big buildups. And I really do think the moments before the Boonty Eve classic are like just incredible. The flag display, you know, you see the people in the crowd, they're introducing all the pod, um, pod racers and the you know, people that, that pilot them. And then like Jabba walking out and you see Gardula in the back and, uh, Matt Woods in it. It's just like, it's just, I don't know. It's just so much pomp and circumstance and like something about it. And I love the pod race, but the beginning, just the build, the music, I don't know. I, I, it can't be beat in my head. And like, 
the um, what's the thing, Jerry, that farts? Um, the uh, uh, the EOP. Yes. EOP, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, which I on the 4K uh, in in the box set there is uh, the bone. There are nine bonus discs for each. There's a bonus disc for each movie. Yeah. They have the theatrical uh, cut of the pod race. Wow. And As a bonus? That Oh yeah. Or uh oh, no no no, I'm sorry. I'm getting that mixed up with the uh the 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 uh extended and, and uh cut scenes. There is an extended uh pod race intro and that EOP fart could have been a full 30 seconds. I'm telling you, there was more there's more to the EOP fart. Um, it's 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 one of those that starts Dips and crescendos, and we just got the crescendo in the finished product. Uh, so, Damn. We, we were, did we dodge a bullet? No, or, we were robbed. Or did we, or were we deprived? I yes. don't know. We'll never know, uh, truly, yeah. until everyone you know figures that out. So. <laughs> but, but to answer your question, short answer to your question is, yeah, it's an EOP. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I really, I really do love that that whole setup and. There's just so much build there and like I don't know, even even the moments before you you have that beautiful pan to the actual arena where they're watching, the NASCAR arena. Um and you know, them being in that little uh I guess you would almost call it like a um what did you even call it? The place where like Sabul was getting like massaged by the Twi'lex, which is also pretty funny. Oh, like <laughs> the garage or whatever. Yeah, it's like a tent hanger. or something. Which yeah. still blows my mind that that thing was a miniature. Yes. Right. Like it's amazing. Is, it, anyway, crazy. Yeah. No, um, it's a, it's, a, it's a great moment. Yeah, it's a great moment. The, you got the flags, the music. Uh, fart joke aside, we can give or take that. That's certainly Georgia's <laughs> style. Uh, you know, right. Bo- Boba Fett's death followed by a, a burp joke. So it, it's yeah. part of what it does. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, kids laugh. What's that? Anything to make the kids laugh. You know, so. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's my best George. So <laughs> yeah, we all got we all got a George. Uh, yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, it, it, I I become increasingly more fascinated with the pod race, and I liked it then. I am just intrigued by the storytelling that can come out of that. Uh, I keep talking a, a lot a lot about what I think about just pod racing and, and Star Wars, and and what more I'd like to learn from it. Uh, so that yeah, that that is uh, it's George finally getting to uh, a, a car. Race. Race. <laughs> yes. Yeah. George finally got to do it, and he really knew how to do it and do it well. And it's edited so well, and the sound and and the, and the use of silence at one point uh, in during the the, the chase. Um, yeah, a lot there to to love, and it starts with that moment. Yes, it's just this weird thing because you've got I don't know. It, it, it's it's twenty minutes. Like it's seriously twenty minutes of a movie, and at no point, at least to me, does it feel like twenty minutes. Like seriously, like mm, I, yeah. it right it's just done so well. And like just the animation of everything and every character has its own quirk, you know, and there's just so many little things like, uh, Jerry, you probably know the name of it because you're the cannon junkie here. Um, who's the little guy that gets exploded in the, in the like cave. Uh, Uh, Oh, Oh, uh, rats. Rats. Yes. Yes. Like that. Which you get to see like in the deleted scene. Well, you probably know this Ken and stuff like he, you get to see his family. I know you guys have talked about that on four center before how his, his family was there watching him. Yeah. You get to see them. Uh, react to things <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah, I, it's been a while since I've seen that, but yeah, I mean, yeah, they're there watching. You see him in the background walking by, all sad. But yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated by rats, Tyrell. We'll, we're actually gonna be doing something with him on Four Center real soon. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he and jo- Joseph just absolutely love love poor rats. He, yeah. Oh, tragic story there and stuff. It's just that. Yeah, there's there's a whole backstory to that guy. So anyway, yeah. you can, just so yeah. much can be pulled from that moment, you know. And yeah, I. And the Pod Racer video game actually really kind of helped with that too. You know, I played it when I was growing up for the N64 and it just, there wasn't anything like that in there, but like you get more layering of those weird characters and you have to choose them and they're making all kinds of noises and stuff. It's just, it's weird. It's awesome. (laughs) It's just George. It's just weird. You get to see a lot more of those characters that you race as too. And that extends. I would recommend anyone just go, you probably find it on YouTube. I mean, it looked like, honestly, it wasn't, they didn't resolute that stuff, like bring that thing, that stuff up to 4k. It looks like you're watching it on YouTube, like some shaky cam stuff so just just watch it on youtube it's fine review coming soon kids uh, <laughs> ken what about your first moment man all right so yeah here's, here's the thing I, I, i'll i'm not gonna let's not lie to the audience i started making a list that was a little 
bigger. And I, I think I've got some moments we want to talk about from that there. But uh, it's keeping in spirit with what you guys are talking about, and even some of the stuff I wrote. I don't I don't want to remix everything from from the book. So I'll go a little bit uh, different direction uh, with uh, with some of my moments. So one of the moments that I love uh, that's small, and I think it speaks to the DNA of of the spirit of Star Wars, is in Return of the Jedi, and that's uh, Princess Leia uh, meeting Wicket. And oh, uh, wow. the moment of her giving the snack to Wicket is it's a fun oh, moment. It's a cute nice. moment. It's a testament to uh, Warwick Davis, uh, Levin, given this role, you know, last second and, and everything there. But it, it speaks to not just the the uh, an important aspect of the rebellion, which is they are going outside the lines to find different allies and uh, di- diversifying their forces against the, uh, you know, the empire, uh, which um has a pretty you know straight line that they're on. Uh, it, it, it's it's to Leia too. It, everyone else, uh, George always said the rebellion was Leia's story, and everyone else is uh, fallen for. Uh, they're they're trapped by the Ewoks. The Han's trying to pull a blaster. Uh, Luke's confused. Eventually uses the Force, but he can't even he can't get out of the situation. Uh, you know, and, and it takes a little help from three PO. Uh, which is an interesting tie to uh, the Rise of Skywalker novel, by the way, with 3PO and, and Wicket and everything there. Yeah. But um, uh, the oh. so the moment that Leia figures it out, that Leia's just, this is how to do it. You, you treat them right, you treat them nice, and you find allies where you're not looking for allies. It, it's, a, it's a real big testament to her as a character, her as a leader, and the rebellion as a, as a whole. And it just it boils down to a great little exchange. I think it's underrated. And I always say there's a lot of room for cute in Star Wars and just seeing a little Ewok just kind of be like, ooh, what's that snack you're giving me? You know, I, I experienced that with my chihuahuas today and uh, I'd gladly fight with them <laughs> against the Empire. So uh, anyways, I just love that moment, Leia and Wicket and her finding that ally. Damn, that's, that's awesome. Amazing. Yeah, that is a great moment, too, just because you've got that j- just the whole thing about like you were saying, like the Empire going to that planet and and not caring about any of that. Mm -hmm. Um, The, just the kindness that Leia has like that's in her spirit, that's in her nature and all that. It's such a great moment. And again, I, I love that you brought up the fact that Warwick was 11 Mm -hmm. when they shot that, because that, that doesn't read like there's an 11 year old child in in that costume Mm -hmm. at all. Um, it's so genuine. It's so like you believe that is an Ewok. And I mean, it's like my, my two year old loves that moment mm. uh, because she loves the Ewoks and stuff. But it, it's like I, I'm like her in that moment. Like, I believe that is that's an Ewok. Yes. That's not, you know, and now they blink and stuff, you know. So, of course, <laughs> that's uh, they're not as dead eyed. But uh, <laughs> it's I don't know. It, it is like. Even before the digital blinking and all that kind of stuff, you could just tell that that was just a kind, inquisitive, like, you know, mur- little, uh, like you guys say, unfortunate murder bear. Um, mm. But it, I don't know. The murder didn't come out then, I guess. Uh, it, was, it was a little more of the cute side at that point. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. It's, that, that is a great, great, subtle moment, man, for sure. Totally. Yeah, no, thanks. I love it. And, and to me, it ties. We always talk about the emotional canon of Star Wars. It, it ties to uh, a lot of the lessons and themes in uh, Solo about mm-hmm. how the rebellion was actually mm. born out of uh, not just a military movement, uh, though it all ends up kind of into that. Uh, yeah. It's it's the oppression of the Empire, and everyone's going to rise up against that eventually if they if they are shown the way. Um, and and Leia's, Leia knows the way. Yeah, Definitely. And go. just like, I don't know, Wicket is... Such a great character, only because you that's the per, the best person to get introduced to. And like Jerry said, anyone can get in, anyone like understands it instantly. You're like, oh, okay, this thing yeah. is not there to hurt. You know, that thing is just genuinely inquisitive and wants to make sure that whoever this person is, they're not an enemy, but oh, they're very neither feeding me. This is a very beautiful yeah. Yeah. moment, you know, and it really does it just gives show you a false Leia. sense of security, you know. Yes. So you, get, you get used to their they're cute and then like you don't see Eat them like, turning on you at all. So Yeah. I don't know, dude. Um, it, it, it's it's funny that whole indoor moment is almost a little bit like the the Boon to Eve classic. There's a lot of culture there, you know, like mm-hmm. when they're telling the stories and they're about to cook Han and like all mm-hmm. of that for them to end up going from being almost like third world to then taking down the empire all because of Wicked's positive interaction is that's that's pretty awesome. That's beautiful. 
Yeah, that's George, a, and George was I, saying some stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, definitely oh, for sure. And like you brought up, Ken, the in the novelization that like I loved the moment in Rise of Skywalker where you see Wicket and uh, yeah. Is, do we know is that Chief Wicket? Do we know if the, for sure? <laughs> did they say? <laughs> It doesn't list him as Chief Wicked, and I've always right. wanted that till till I realized that would be usurping the throne from Princess Nisa. Right. So right. Uh, we got to recognize her power. Uh, she is canon, um, but yes. yeah, no, it, it's it, right, I think it's just for to as Wicked and obviously his son Palmin. Right. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think but, it's Chief. Right. Well, I just I love like you said that, uh, it, and I, I've yeah I think Scott I don't know if you've gotten through the novel yet or not, but like uh, just that whole moment with them in three PO uh, mentioning. Like, basically, like, essentially, Scotty, they say, 3PO, oh, our golden god has saved us. Um, wow, and, and that's actually sick. It's kinda, yeah. It was awesome. It was a cool moment. And that is just such a, I love, yeah, just everything around Wicket, that whole character. And, and now it was, I, I didn't know how uh, much it would affect me to see him again. Uh-huh. Kind of thing. But, man, it's such a tiny moment, but it, it does. It says a lot. So, Yep, no, uh, baby. Anyway, you have up for no. life, man. You have no. for life. Uh, you have up for life, but also <laughs> victory celebration. So. No, yup, nub. <laughs> Sorry, and we had Hello Greedo on an episode like yeah. a month back, and we got into the special edition debate, and I'm still a yub nub guy. I don't know where you lay We're, on that whole thing, but I'm me uh, and Scotty uh, are on on uh, two different sides on this. Yeah, I, I'm victory celebration, uh, oh but I own a lot of recordings of the yub nub version and uh, enjoy it just as well, and yes. do miss it. But I think victory celebration uh, uh, just works for me a little bit more. Yeah, okay. A man I of class. That. A man of class. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, Jerry, well, I hope you're next. Next one's not the ending of Return of the Jedi. I'm just going to be It's not the ending of Return of the Jedi, but we're going to go right back to uh, smack dab at the end of uh, Phantom Menace. Okay. And it is the moment that really kind of spawned all this for me. It is Anakin destroying the droid control ship. And it's just kind of everything. It's the whole atmosphere (laughs) around that moment. Because I think a lot of people saw that and they go, oh, okay, this kid's like, whoops. Like a Home Alone (laughs) moment where he like Mm -hmm. accidentally lets the paint can go and makes the whole house explode. But uh, have I seen a Home Alone movie? Yes, I have seen a couple. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> just the not necessarily even that. It, to me, it, it doesn't really read as like, whoops, here we go. It, to me, it reads like this kid is like so steeped in the four. Like he is so steeped. He's, he's like, uh, again, we find out uh, apparently he's the child of the force. But he's so strong in the force that it just almost guides his like, like, oops, I accidentally pressed a button and it was pointing in the right mm-hmm. direction. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not the moment. It's the whole basically flight out for me oh, that good. I love. And the, you've got the, these people dying on the outside, these brave pilots of Nebu and stuff. And they're like, and I'm getting chills just talking about this. Like, seriously, this gives me so much chills. Just like all these guys, fly, all these men and women out here fighting to, like, free their planet and stuff. You know, who cares what the, the treaty is that they're trying to get, you know, they were trying to get her to sign and stuff. There, there's a real flesh and blood battle going on out here. And they hear, all of a sudden, they're like, what's, well, it's blown up from the inside. We didn't hit it and stuff. And, and then just, I love the whole... Uh, all of their dialogue mixed with the force theme. Da, 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 da. Just it's such a great rendition of it, too. It's not it, to me. It, it, to me, I don't know. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. The cadence of that version of the force theme is different from any other moment in Star Wars. I, I think feel it like. is. I think it's it is. very it's it's almost like we're in the heat of this, man. We're in mm-hmm. the battle and the force is still working. And they go, look, one of ours out of the main hold that line gets me every time now and just like seeing Anakin walk out and he's going woohoo and I know it's like oh yeah yippee woohoo Anakin says that all the time but just just get off y'all's high horses for one second (laughs) and realize this kid's coming out woohoo you know uh of course the great now this is podcasting or uh, sorry (laughs) shout out to uh, Jason Wood I guess uh (laughs) Uh, love you, Jace. Anyway, uh, the, you, you know, now this is pod racing line, uh, but just the whole, like, look, one of ours on the main hold, he goes, woohoo, they all go, woo, they all start yeah. cheering together. Yeah. And just to see it, like, all blow up as the force team crescendos into just, I don't even know. It, again, it's different than any other time 
uh, it's that the, we've ever seen it. It's and the, that that I think is my top. Honestly, I don't know why I brought this one up second because it's probably my favorite uh, yeah. Star Wars DNA moment because it's just it. it I don't know, man. It, it's. It, I have I, I have feelings right now, so just yeah, yeah. <laughs> Star Wars feelings are great. I, I love your They're perspective good. on it. There, I, I I love this moment. Um, but I saw it again when I saw it a little older. It, to me, I was part of that generation that was like, ah, this, right. this is just like the trench run, and yeah, hey, yeah you right, know, we right. weren't we weren't so steeped in Star Wars poetry as we uh, needed to be at the time. But I love getting <laughs> your perspective of seeing that in the theater and the, and that connecting that moment with the greater Star Wars uh, adventure that that's about. Yeah, and I I to be honest, I never got too bogged down on. Um, and that can be a little uh, screenwriting 101 type of uh, the hero must make it, you know, it, 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 with Jar Jar, Jar Jar doesn't make a choice as much. And that, that one it maybe affects me a little bit more than, than Anakin, like you said, as someone who's so steeped in the force without even knowing it, uh, that right. stuff's going on. So I, I never got too hung up on that. And, um, you know, now this is, now this is a uh, pod racing is, has become its own kind of, uh, uh, cult line, but out of that moment comes right. a great, a great victory. It, it looks so good. And yeah, the, the, the Bravo squad kind of like, that's, that's not us. I mean, it's not one of ours or, you know, that's one of ours, whatever it is. You know, it's just like, it is, uh, it right. is part of the spirit of star Wars indeed. Yeah. It's, it's the way it happens too, because you know, return of the Jedi does the best with like the three way battle, you know, indoor right. meets space meets the throne, you know, the, the Palpatine battle. Then yeah. you get the Phantom Menace, which, like, has been building up to this moment. But, like, it's four different ways. You got, you know, v- Padme and the crew going to the, the top of their throne room. Then you got Jar Jar and the Gungans on the field. Then you got the space battle. Then you have the lightsaber duel. And, like, it truly all climaxes with that moment because... You know, when that ship explodes, obviously the droids get shut down. Then new gun gets captured. The first domino. Yeah. Then, and then yeah. you get to the – you have – it's weird. It's like you get a win, a win, a win, and then you get hit with a loss from Qui-Gon, which is still a mm. win because Darth Maul has then been chopped in half. So it's it's weird. It's mm. like – I, I, I like I can said re- chopped in half and not not killed. There you go. No, right. that's yeah. yeah. Cannon, See, I, cl- I was very strict <laughs> with my words. No, um, and uh, that's the thing, though, Jerry. That's that's a beautiful moment because, like, I don't know. Not many, not many moments, almost for me in Star Wars, have been like a successful four way battle like that. Like the Rise of Skywalker, mm-hmm. actually didn't even do that for me. TLJ did. Rise of Skywalker mm-hmm. didn't really have a incredible amazing huge climax like the Phantom Menace kind of had which is funny to say you know it's it's one of those mm-hmm. ones that people really don't like to bring up but I don't know Phantom Menace has some incredible jewels you know um you know absolutely stored within There's, it it, yeah. it pains me to say it but to even utter this phrase but there are some diamonds in the rough uh, if you <laughs> have to put it that way so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I uh I love that moment, Jerry, and the explosions still look great. And the fact that like it explodes and then the thing in the middle explodes and like the arm falls. Like mm. I have, look, I have mine literally right here. I, I have my, uh, what is it called? What are these toys <laughs> Oh, you called? have this. I don't even have a droid control ship, but that's amazing. But I do have a shrine toy? to everything. Uh, it's a metal. Everyone hates in Star Wars that's behind awesome. me. But, you know, that's with great. Rontos and Jow Yows. Yeah. Jow Yows is right here. So yeah, that's my <laughs> oh, spirit boy. animal. Uh, but boy. anyway, uh, Scotty, man, what's your next one? Okay, my next one um, I might go a little out of order. This one like still makes me tear up, like just the thought of it, and it's so weird because I'm sure can uh, yes, you were at the Mandalorian panel. I actually talked to you for a hot second after that panel, but at the Mandalorian gotcha, panel yeah. in Chicago. You're watching that panel, and the whole time you're like, this show's going to be kick-ass. This is going to be awesome. You know, like, man, we just saw some, like, 20 minutes worth of stuff that no one else is going to see till October. This was incredible. And then you're sitting there that night, that Tuesday night. I, I'm, God, it gets me. And you're watching it. And I don't know. I, you might have been maybe in the know of this, Ken. I don't know. But when they showed the child for the very first time, I don't think, like, I've ran around I, – I think it probably was the greatest moment in Star Wars for me. Just, like, for reveals. <laughs> like, just so unexpected. I was thinking it would be Boba Fett and he's hiding out, 50 years old. Like, maybe this makes sense. What's going on? And then they open that little thing and it's just an infant that looks just like Yoda. I, I'm going to – I don't know. I, I'm 
it's almost can, speechless. Can you imagine if they didn't say before all of like before Mandalorian came out like a week or two before like uh, it's gonna have a big spoiler in the first episode? Can you imagine if they didn't say that? Yeah. How we, we would? I don't think any of us would would we'd probably be uh, like still rocking in the fetal position in our beds at this yeah. point. <laughs> um, you know, if it, I don't think we would have went past episode one because we wouldn't have been mentally capable. But that's uh, yeah. Yeah, even still, with knowing that, it was like, what is it going to be? What's it going to be? Um, God. No one, no one would have predicted that. Uh, no. Yeah. And that's it, such a great, great moment. It, it it added a layer, just a huge layer to the show that you did not expect. Like, just like a blanket of like, well, what the hell is he going to do next? Like, this is not going to be a secondary character. Like, you, I instantly knew that. Like, this is so much more important than that. And... I don't know, Ken, what, what was your perspective of that moment being – you're kind of – you're in the know of some stuff. I know you are. We've You've talked about it on your show yeah. before. But did you know anything about yeah. that at all or no? I 100 percent did. And wow. And I wish I didn't. Um, mm. But in fact, no one no – one I, I, here's the thing. I didn't know that. I didn't – and this is how much I loved that moment. Yeah. Um, I didn't know it was going to be like that. I didn't know it was coming at the end of the episode. Um, oh. I kind of was like, oh, man, Boba Fett. I was like, is he going to come up? Like, I know Favreau wanted this to be a Boba Fett series and they yes. denied that uh, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I wasn't thinking that. But two weeks before on Jedi Council, I made a – I made a joke about Baby Yodas. No one remembers that I did that. Wow. And I said, I don't know. There's going to be a whole bunch of Baby Yodas in this series. Who knows? Um, <laughs> and I wish I, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know because I, I I had been told that something's going to happen and, and there's going to be this species and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. I, I just didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. So when it happened and it, the moment they cut to the little uh, oh, baby, uh, baby ears. space pram, I was like, Oh, even before then, I was like, oh, it's happening. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> and then even in that moment, it exceeded my expectations. And, and mm. uh, as, as Scrimshaw calls him, Yupel, uh We'll Yupel. see what his real name is. Um, uh, the child has just continued because it's a, it's a character. It's a fully yes, functional right. character. And, and to your point, like... I, you know, I don't want this to turn into this Mandalorian discussion too too much, but uh, coming out of right. that panel, I was not thr- I was not too thrilled. I was like, yeah, I don't want Star Wars Underground. I don't want dark and gritty. Yeah, uh, I was in a big disagreement with some of my colleagues at the time uh, on that show, um, and it turned into it, it just turned into what I needed it to be, which is it's 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 a it's a story about change, growth. It's mm-hmm. it's a it's a warrior becoming a parent, whether he wants to or not. Uh, it, it, and and a lot of it has to do with Baby Yoda. I mean, I was just rewatching episode four, uh, which is oh, the first time we meet uh, uh, Cara Dune, and um, oh, the little subtle all through where he, the child is. Anytime he sees Mando do something, he acts it out after, mm-hmm. including his walk, including his. Yeah. And it's just like it's it's breathtaking and it's just simple uh, beauty of just this a child looking at his now essentially adopted father and and, and trying to be like him and how th- there's programming and this whole series is about your own programming overcoming it and and what you can you can you can pass on all these big themes so the oh, show wow. exceeded my expectations and it exceeded it because of going back to that moment a moment i even kind of knew and was sitting there going oh wow they are oh wow this is different this is yes. different than even what i had been told so yeah long story short uh, i do love that moment too that's awesome it is a great one and, and culturally, like what it did after is the incredible. Oh my part. gosh! Like you can say what you want about the rise of Skywalker and TLJ and the fan and the, the, the Force Awakens. I mean, the Chewie were home might be just a moment bigger than that. The trailer reveal, but this within itself is just like taken the well, world by storm. It's got everyone for watching Star it. Wars fans. The Chewie were home, yes. like made us all cry for hours upon end. But yeah. baby Yoda transcended <laughs> fandom. Yes. There are baby Yoda memes I see on my Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. On Facebook. We're talking the people that get things like five days after Twitter gets them. Yeah. Um there are baby Yoda and no shade to Facebook. I'm just kidding. Uh there there are baby Yoda memes from like my great aunts and stuff. You know, like yeah. it's <laughs> it's like People are just all about the Baby Yoda liking chicken nuggies and stuff mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And also, um, my uh, – again, she's going to be three years old by the time uh, this episode comes out. Oh, wow. So happy birthday to my little one. But uh, she this week has been playing uh, I'm Baby Yoda 
you're the Mandalorian. Be the Mandalorian, Daddy. Be the Mandalorian. And I'm like, all right, Baby Yoda, take your big girl medicine. Yeah, come here. Baby Yoda, put on your pants. You know, different stuff like that, you know, like... Uh, baby, awesome. let's go to bed. Drink your juice. And all that. It's pretty great. It's pretty great. That's so, awesome. But anyway, yeah, there you go. That's. But it is. I. I can. You're. You're so right. And it. it autom- that moment immediately changed that show from what we thought it was going to be into something so much more. And, oh, and totally. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great moment, Scott. Great moment. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. What's your next one, bud? All right. I'm gonna go. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go a little. Gosh, where do I want to go? Right, I can go. I am going to go to um, Force Awakens, and one of the uh, little moments that made us not only just continue to love Star Wars, and it was coming back in 2015, and we didn't know what that meant, and we're learning it. And in the first few minutes of the movie, we're introduced to Ray, and Daisy really did such a good job of just capturing that mm. spirit alone. Um, uh, you know, uh, dreaming about what's out there, but but you know the deep stuff of being stuck, and she's stuck in her own routine. She she's too afraid to leave. That's some of the deeper stuff. I still love the moment with her putting on the the helmet from the uh, Tearfun Yellow Ace pilot, uh, the X Wing uh, helmet, and just kind of daydreaming and just kind of being lost in that uh, because that is us. That's that's what we did as a kid. You got on your mm-hmm. bike, and it was a speeder bike or an A Wing yep. or a snow speeder. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, even I I joke now. I even uh, some nights if I'm driving home late at night when I was driving freely, uh, you know, sheltered in place like every responsible person now. Um, but um, getting on the on ramp on a freeway and just being like, I'm an X wing heading down the trench, and we're launching into battle. Like that's that's part of the spirit. And to see a character, uh, you know, wrestling with the legacy of the stories that came before them, which is definitely mm. the point of the Force Awakens, if not the entire sequel it's trilogy. Beautiful. Is, yeah, what does what the current generation do with the, the generation that came before them and, 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 the, and the, th- the successes they had and the failures they had mm-hmm. and the mistakes they left us with and the mistakes uh, uh, you know that we have to uh, don't want to make ourselves? Anyways, it all comes down to that little moment. She's sitting there. She's daydreaming, just kind of do-do-do. It leads to the great BB-8 introduction between her uh, and BB-8. So I, just, I, just, I think that's one of those little moments that I, I – Love the opening moments of Ray in on Jakku and Force Awakens. I think it's just some of the best Star Wars uh, out there. Yes, indeed. That's awesome. That is some of the best and stuff. And I love now that I can. My my kid during uh, all this self quarantine is just now starting to get into. Like we found a, a you know that BB-8, the my like my buddy BB-8 essentially. They released <laughs> right. during the the you know TLJ. It, we found it on super sale in 2018, and nice. uh, I bought one. She was too young, you know, to to play with. Not even a year old yet, and uh, she's just now rediscovered it down here in my makeshift uh, studio in in my <laughs> nice. in my dungeon of a basement. Uh, and, and the past couple of days she has been playing, uh, I'm Ray, you're Poe to me. I don't know why Poe, but you're Poe and this is BB-8 and BB-8's my buddy. BB-8 even like what was like, she wanted BB-8 to, uh, sleep with her in her bed, uh, last night. And so, uh, just, I guess, assume that's what Ray and and BB-8 probably did. They snuggled under a stormtrooper blanket. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, in, in that ad at. And stuff, so you know, we uh, we ended up having to take him out because she didn't go to bed for for hours because uh, she was pressing the top of his head and making him beep, uh, and that was just you know frustrating. But uh, <laughs> that whole thing, like she can see Ray though. Like in we, were, I was watching The Force Awakens the other day with her in the room, and just that moment, she opens up that compartment, and you see her with the goggles, full face mask and stuff. She goes. Look, Dad, it's Ray. Daddy, it's Ray. Nice. And like she knows and stuff. And that's it's just so iconic and it's so like it does. It says so much. Just those opening moments of her life. Uh it's it's beautiful. And well, and also sad and haunting. At the yeah, same time. well it adds the tragicness to it. Like you ought to, like literally if you haven't known us already, she has a pretty terrible life. But when she goes into the ad at and then she's <laughs> scratching off, you know, and you and they did a real quick shot of like all the time she's done that, you know, it's just like, I, I couldn't even imagine, you know, what it must be like and to daydream and to look about a, a, you know, a ship taking off must be like, just, you know, what kind of, what you long for. It's kind of, that moment, Ken, is almost like her, like Luke looking towards the sunset, that and when she's looking at the ship, when she's cleaning off that thing too. Those are the moments oh, yeah. that like, mm-hmm. you understand that character, you know, that, JJ did so much in five minutes, oh, like really, for that character. It was amazing. 
That's a, that's a beautiful moment, Kim. I'm thinking yeah. about how much. Oh, sorry, sorry. Can I just say there's no. so much of an existential crisis when she's looking. You mentioned her looking at the older woman there. I'm like, that is, <laughs> that's deep right there. Yes, uh, that, that that gets me right now. I'm like, oh, yeah. That moment is just, yeah. Oof. yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, kid. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I was going to talk about the twin sons moment too because it's just, that's quintessential DNA of Star Wars and, and one of the reasons it was so successful in '77 is mm-hmm. is George tying into uh, the kid and all of us dreaming about getting off and and, and it is it is a similar moment for Ray but it, it works it plays out differently especially by the time we meet Maz and Maz is in her life telling her you know it's not behind you it's in front of you because Luke mm-hmm. wants to go Luke wants to get the hell out of there mm-hmm. um he, it, it, I, I in my book I broke down the moment to three distinct kind of looks you know what he's doing like I want to be out there I can't be out there maybe I can be out there uh with with Ray I always say I, I, her routine traps her there. She doesn't want to mm-hmm. leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, she doesn't. She wants another life. She wants someone, and, and, and it's marking the days that she's been left and the days until she'll be found again. You know, and 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 the force is going to find her and has found her in a different way. So, and the journey plays out uh, different for her. But yeah, it, so it's the same moment, but it's uh, again that different that different use of the moment where she doesn't want to leave. She 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 wants to be right here but what does that mean and what does that life and you mentioned the old woman and just like right. well this this could be it um <laughs> and you know though though she feels though she wants to be part of the story you know she wants to find her place in the story that that we know but she is she is trapped she's literally trapped by her life there and i, I love that moment too yeah the twin sons playing off that's it works really well it does it really does um fantastic choice ken um gerald where are you taking this next one well, next, uh, I think we'll head over to a, a little film I like to call A New Hope. Uh, you know, if, you, if, you're Scotty, if you're Scotty's ilk, it's, it's Star War. Um, but we, we uh, <laughs> no shade, no shade. I know, I know the thing. I know things, guys. Okay. Uh, but it's just, just kind of a, a moment that before I, I really thought about this list for this episode, I didn't realize how much this one really kind of sticks out in my mind anytime I'm watching A New Hope. It's Luke rushing back home. It's, the, it's not that moment, but he rushes back to, you know, he's like, oh, no, if the, if the stormtroopers found out about the Jawas, they'll, you know, that lead him back home. Um, home. Just, can we just t- take a moment, too, to, like, just love Mark Hamill's uh, delivery of the line? That would lead them back home. Oh. Um, I just <laughs> I love that. Uh, but just him pulling up, and honestly, it's the shot of him seeing his mm-hmm. his hair blowing in the wind in like the the coolest way possible. I don't yeah. know. It's it's just it's so epic. It's so um, this this guy. This is the wind of change, the wind of destiny, uh, and like him seeing the destruction of his life. Essentially, that was his whole life. That's the only family he's ever known. It's essentially his mom and dad, mm-hmm. uh, his par- the people who raised him. Um, I don't know. I, I, man, I can get like really like dark on this, but you know, you, you know, like there's the there's the burnt skeletons right there. It's mm-hmm. like that that is that's rough for like a, a, a fantasy space movie that like wow this helped us forget about the the Vietnam War and stuff. You know, like <laughs> all the weird yeah. darkness and stuff. But it's still a, a, such a dark moment and such a light film. But just Luke, his reaction where he, like, looks down, you know, like, you can see, like, the sadness. He's like, I, I should have been here, but if I was here, I, I would have been like, that would have been me too. Mm-hmm. You can see so much just in, like, Mark's. And, again, I know Mark Hamill in that movie seems a little whiny to some people. But just, like, the, Mark Hamill is, I feel like, a very underrated actor. Mm-hmm. The look down and then the look back up of. This is I, it. Yeah, I, I've I have no choice. I've but I've th- here I go. You know, um, that whole moment and also that shot where it pulls back and you see oh, his, the you cut see of his the back, wide. yeah, and yeah, the wide shot of his, his back and then the burning homestead in front mm. of him oh. and then it cuts to the ties. That's one of the best uh, wipes in Star Wars, in my opinion. And just that shot is very modern. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That shot is very like like. To, uh, early 2000s, 2010s, man. Like, I mm-hmm. just, you yeah. couldn't tell me that wasn't in, like, Force Awakens, like, yeah. Last Jedi or something. Like, that yeah. is such a beautiful, tragic shot. And, uh, yeah. So, it's very melancholy, but that moment is just, 
more than almost, uh, it's like that last push from the Twin Sons moment. I want to go and have an adventure to, I have no choice. I have to go on this adventure. Yeah. And it's, it, to me, it's just like a, a crazy chill inducing moment. It is. Love it. It's like, I don't know, the, it, it kind of parallels what I'm going to bring up after this, but like the swelling of the Force theme. And like the Force theme is really a big right. staple of the sequel trilogy as much as it was the original trilogy, you know, and it's been used a lot. But like something about that version and the version I'm going to bring up in a second is like it's huge. It's like you just having to accept it, you know. You you didn't know you'd be a part of this, but it's definitely going to be a role you're going to play in this overall story now. And like... Yeah, I don't know. I, I've, I've, I, the only time I've ever experienced loss is a flood came through Louisiana, 2016. I looked at my home the same way I'm sure look Luke looked at it. And you're just like, what do you do? You know, you either stay, you you know, yeah, rebuild, or pick you, up these pieces. Yeah, you got to pick up the pieces and, and make this work. You know, and and emotionally, it's just it must have kind of it might have felt a little bit different for Luke, but it was still one of those things like this this house that I stayed at for so long is just gone. And like the people I loved are gone from it. We'll never have these moments again. Like it's, I don't know. And it's silent. Like Luke doesn't say anything. I think that's what I like the most about it. Like it really is just a, a moment to himself, a very personal moment. And it's because of, you know, m- maybe it wasn't even a mistake he made. It, it would have happened regardless. It's, that, it's something I didn't think about. I, I I'm going back to when I, Saw it in my earlier days, and, and without applying all these big, deep Star Wars themes, I'm going to how my gut reacted when I was, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten. I, I just what you said, uh, Scotty, just the idea of like this was going to happen, and he wasn't there. And I used to get terrified of the fact of what what if Luke was there? Yeah. yeah. What if it had played out that way? And as a kid, that terrorized me, that tormented me, it scared me. Uh, but you never know. But uh, your journey begins. Um, uh, you know, uh, it just ties a little bit to the Twin Sons moment and some of the writings I did about that. Where you're like, you, your journey's already begun, and you sometimes don't know it. And mm-hmm. Luke's journey had already begun, and that's where he really had to f- start to face it. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, uh, I don't know if I can. What's that next moment, Scott? Well, the next thing really kind of <laughs> deals with the same exact like. It's the same music, and I think it's just a amazing use of it. It's whenever. You know, Finn's obviously defeated. The Battle of Starkiller Base had just occurred. Han's dead. Kylo's like, all right, there's that lightsaber that belongs to me. You know, oh, he hadn't said that yet, I think, right? No, no. Maybe he did. Ooh, I don't remember. It, it's the, uh, yeah, he said it to Finn. Yeah, he said it to yeah, Finn. Finn picks said, it up, you know. The lightsaber it belongs to, to me. Him. Yeah. Man, yeah. that whole, man, all that in the forest is just solid gold. So oh, it's, yeah. it's continue, aged continue. amazing. So, yeah, yeah. With, with that being said, <laughs> You see him reach it, and it. Of course, you got a, a visual parallel to uh, Empire Strikes Back with the you know ice uh, ice around the uh, lightsaber in the snow, and it's shaking, it's shaking, and he's going for it more. And then, of course, everyone in the theater, at least for me, I'm like, oh my god, here's Luke. But that's where JJ's like, nope. Not not what you need, not what the story needs. This is the next. This is the next person coming up, and like, man, even then that when I first saw it, it was like the stand up moment. You're like, what? Like when? You know how? And you know, obviously she had had contact with that lightsaber prior to this moment, but just the the way it flies and he like moves out of the way and it she catches it and then it's the same exact use of that version of the force theme with the the violins going da 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 da, da and then. Just the build of it and, like, his face, then she ignites it. It's like, oh, my God. It's that same moment. It's like, what? I got to do this now. Like, this is it. Like, this is – I got to make a choice. Like, yeah, I can't run from her anymore. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much my my Star Wars moment for that particular scene in TFA. It's it's a it's a powerful moment for many reasons, and we were just discussing it on the Star Wars rank last week with the best lightsaber moments. I think it was Joseph's uh, top one or two. I can't. I can't wow. remember now. But he he describes it uh, much more beautifully than I do. But it is literally. You know, we hear about the the call of the hero, the hero's blade, mm-hmm. and all these kind of Joseph Campbell myth uh, things. It it is the moment, like you said, Ray does it. She calls for the blade, but when it hits her hand, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of trepidation. A oh, lot yeah, of yeah. like. I wanted this journey. Now it's here, and 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 I have to figure that out. And it goes back to the beginning. It goes back to what we talked about before about her on Jakku, 
and what Maz is telling her, you know, uh, it, it's in front of you and you don't want to go in front of you. You're so tied to your past and, and you've got to learn from your past, but you've got to move forward and, and, and the journey and, and adventure and lessons and all of it's in front of you. So I love that it doesn't, she doesn't call the blade over and grab it and it's like, all right, we're going, I'm going to kick your ass. It's like, <laughs> oh crap, my, my journey is, is now. Yes. It's no longer mm. a dream. It's, it's, it's now. And uh, I think that's why that really works. And yeah, it could have. And that's the angle I took when I, I did write about it and why we love Star Wars. And the, the angle I took was, yeah, for, I, I was like, oh, that shot looks like Empire. Mm-hmm. Luke's been missing. Mm-hmm. We all want him to come back and kick ass. Here's the moment. And mm-hmm. man, that would have been just such a short change yeah. journey. Yeah. Uh, it would have been a dead end version of storytelling. We got something better. And I'm so glad I wasn't ready for Luke or, or Ray, but, but. Everyone else was ready for Ray in that moment, and that's why I love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Jay, what about you, man? What, 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 what did you take away from that moment when you first saw it? I don't know. I, I'm just sitting here trying to figure out, was that like the same exact cue, or did John Williams re-record that? It, it, it almost oh, seems no, he like it's it. straight. It just seems straight from yes. that. Like It's almost like they just lifted it off of that scene, and it is, it's, um, it's beautiful in that it is – those are like the same scenes, essentially. Mm-hmm. It's the I, I have to pick up this moment. The, the, like you're saying, Ken, this is the moment. Mm-hmm. I I wanted it. Here it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, holy holy shit! You know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Here we go. Um, but th- that moment, I love everything about it. I love the way Kylo uh, is. At first, like he he's like you know the whole thing with Finn, like that's my bl- that it belongs to me. You know he's very like possessive, very like uh, privileged. Like that's that's mine, that's mine. I want it. Give it to me. And then just to see him like okay, now it's my like he plays with Finn for a little bit until he gets like you know poked in the arm. And he's like all right, you know what, I'm done. Goes to get it. Like why isn't this working? <laughs> and <laughs> the way it flies past him and his face is just amazing too. But that just the look on Ray, on Ray's face when when she gets it is again just so. It's powerful. It is. Yeah. It's like it's fear. It's here we go. Uh, I got this. Um, and at the same time, like what? What am I gonna do? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's it's beautiful and it is. It's one of the top moments of all Star Wars to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like that moment is – that's one of those – the moments, you know, you're like – you put them on uh, – you, if you put a movie on while you're like doing laundry or, or like walking around the house or like, you know, doing chores and stuff and, you know, that moment – it's one of those moments where you stop, you yeah. know? Yeah, and you're just like I know it can't. Uh, you can you've talked about that before, man. Like that's just yeah. that, that's just the thing. You know, it's one of those moments where you're like I gotta watch this happen because it's just it's huge. It, it's, it's a quintessential Star Wars moment. It's Definitely. part. It is part of the DNA for sure. Beautiful, Absolutely. Ken. Absolutely. What you got going on, bud? What's next? Uh, you know, we've we've been gone uh, pretty uh, deep here. We've dug dug. Uh, deep into the emotions of, of Star Wars. But I wanted to talk about something that I actually was going to write about, and I, I talked about it on that okay. podcast early on, the 50th, uh, the 50 moments. And I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to write about this because it is such a tiny, tiny little moment. But when I first saw mm. it, I literally, not out loud because I don't watch movies uh, like a jerk uh, like that, but I in my head was just <laughs> like, God, I love Star Wars. Uh, but I end up writing about a bigger moment in this battle. But going to Rogue One, when uh, there's there's a moment where Blue Squadron, um, General Merrick's uh, squad, uh, um, you know, has a, has a big hit. They, they do something good, whatever. It doesn't matter. And and the, the camera cuts to the U wing and Ooh. the the X wings and everything, and it sweeps up. And, and oh, I know this is an audio, yeah. but it just they sweep up and they fly and they they dip and they fly away, and it looks so good. And it's. A uh, testament to Lucasfilm's, uh, you know, uh, C- CGI teams and VFX teams and all this kind of stuff. But I, I just love that because that 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 uh, Rogue One is, is some got some of the best Star Wars action of of, of anything, oh, yeah. and, and that's why I I love it. And I always 
talk about the why behind things. And, and I ended up writing about the Admiral Raddus moment, which is when they all come out of hyperspace. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is Admiral Raddus of the Rebel Alliance because it, it, it's, it's, um, it's the first time the, the Rebel Alliance has been proclaimed publicly as, a, as a, this kind of unified military organization. Yes. It's them coming out of hiding, literally. Uh, they've done things before. They've had successes and misses, but this is the first time. This is, this is the crawl of New Hope in action, and it's all in Radice's statement. It's simple, and, and it's powerful. But we, deep within that are these little things, and I love this because there is there is great joy in uh, General Merrick, rest in peace. Uh, there is great joy in what they're doing, and, and they feel as though they are finally maybe coalescing enough to help each other, to score victory. Yes. Uh, and there's just a little thrill of, of, of the thrill of fighting evil. And that is something that, as a kid, man, I would have loved that moment because I love a lot of the battle, battle of Endor moments um, that are just action shots. And that one was just so well; it, it plays so well. It looks like it looks like you have your Kenner uh, vehicle yep. playset, and you're just yeah. and you're flying <laughs> in your room, and and, I, and that's why I love it. That's beautiful. That's amazing. That is such a cool like. I, it, and you don't have to worry that this is audio because I'm sure if. Anyone who listens to this show can picture it as soon as you say right. that oh, shot where they're flying up, like immediately, <sighs> man. I mean, it comes to memory. Like that is that is just such a beautiful shot. Absolutely, with yeah. Scarif in the background, you know. Mm-hmm, and just, mm-hmm. um, my gosh, it, it, it. I don't know. There, there is something that is that that's that is essential to why, like you're saying, like your book, like why we love Star Wars and stuff. That is, that is a hundred percent part of the DNA because. It's cool moments like that. It's the moments you want to reenact with your action figures. It's the moments that you you're like, "Wow, um, that looks that looks amazing." I can't believe that looks so real. I can't believe that looks so cool. It's just yeah, and yeah. to to see all those like fighters, you know, in the Disney era, a lot of people I know kind of complain about how we get a lot of ships in atmosphere. We we just have we haven't got a I ton of like that. ships flying atmosphere. It, it, it's not really a big thing for me. Uh, like I I think it's I think it's cool and stuff. Me but too. That moment was yeah that's a that's a great pull okay that's that's such a, a good underrated uh mm-hmm. and that, again that's exactly what i was thinking whenever i kind of like told scotty man we should do like something about like this uh dna of star wars just the little moments like that that really make you like you feel it in your gut you're like yes. oh yeah man i love this i love it so scotty yeah. what do you think about that that yeah no you both summarized just the the whole spectacular feeling of it because you you can tell it's their first time really like pulling off something this big just from them flying into the thing and that one ship getting you know crashing as well and like they blow down that what is it it's a different ad at walker it's got an orange box on it but whatever whatever the, the it's bigger a, one yeah, is uh, ACT yeah, yeah, yeah exactly that one <laughs> yeah. then they go down and they just they just ended that thing and you can tell just a moment of desperation and then I, yeah, I guess you're right. It is that kind of dip and pull, and you see a U-wing, which is one of the new additions, and you see a, an X-wing, and yeah, oh, it's just crisp. Like it's, it is kind of you know what, and and mm-hmm. maybe this is a really deep, and it's such a small second, but like you you brought it up, Ken, with the old toys and everything. Like Star Wars, when it it ended in 2005 for me, I was nine years old essentially, and that when the Rogue of the Sith ended in the theater, I was like, that's it. Like, that's it. I will never get anything else, and I'm going to be okay with that. I just, that's just how it was. And, you know, I was little. Right. And then to get Rogue One and to get Solo and to get all the new movies and Mandalorians, like, such a treat. But it is those little moments that, like, just hit home, you know? And just hit you. Just, yeah. I mean, I can see myself doing that with my Legos still. Like, if I had a Lego U Wing in 2002, sure. I would be doing that, you know? It's just. <laughs> I don't know. It's beautiful. It's like we all we all have a moment from the movies back, you know, before 2005, even, you know, back like Return of the Jedi and stuff like that. We all have a moment where a ship did something cool and uh-huh. we tried to reenact it with something. <laughs> yes. and so yes. that's just that's why that just sings so true. You know, <laughs> like all the flips that Anakin and Obi-Wan were doing. Scotty, to your point yes. in yes. Revenge of the Sith. I, mm. I went to see that after I graduated from high school. So I'm a little older than you. I wasn't nine. Yes. But uh, imagine being on the precipice of the rest of your life going. Um, wow. Okay. I guess that's done. Um, what else? Yeah. That was cool. That was cool. Yeah. But anyway, you yeah, know, uh, th- yeah, that great, great, great pool, man. Um, great moment, Kim. Thanks. Um, Jerry, I think this is going to be like our last two, essentially what we're going to go through after this. So Jerry, what's yeah. your second to last one, man? 
Second to last, um, I think I'm going to go a little out of order here. I think I was staying pretty good, like with you know chronological yeah. uh, prequels to see to you know originals to sequels. But I'm going to skip uh, to a moment that is a newer one mm-hmm. uh, from Rise of Skywalker. I've loved Rey ever since we met her in Force Awakens, but. This is the moment for me that cemented her as, I think, probably my favorite Jedi to date. Um, Not to date, not to ask her on a date. I'm happily married. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, To current date, to current date. Um, But anyway, uh, it's Ray. It's when they're on Kajimi and, you know, they're surrounded by Zori and kind of that gang and stuff. And just Ray, like, getting, like, knocking Zori, or Zori gets knocked down and Ray pulls out the lightsaber, holds it at her. Mm-hmm. And, and just the whole exchange between her and Zori of uh, what is it? Zori says to her, uh, not that you care, but I think you're OK. Just and her reply of I care and just the earnestness on her face mm-hmm. and the, that that moment it just hits me like I'm getting warm, fuzzy feelings just even talking about it because <laughs> It's just such a quintessential, like, that is what a Jedi is. That That is yes. a Jedi. It's like, I'm going to protect people, but I, I'm here really to protect all of you. I wish you wouldn't because, I could, like, she senses the good. Just, I feel like just in that moment, I, I feel like she senses the good in Zori. She knows it's just a misunderstanding. I don't want to do this, mm-hmm. but I will do what I have to do to protect the people, you know, my, my people mm-hmm. and to protect good people. And just like the the whole letting her know, like no, I care, mm-hmm. I do care. It's and it it it, it does kind of call back to that funny line of Luke uh, of you know I care, mm-hmm. and stuff. <laughs> but just it it I don't know. Just that whole it's such a a, a small moment, but to me it says so much about Ray's character, and mm-hmm. I absolutely love it. And so that to me that is that is a again it's so new, but I just man. Every time I rewatch that film, that moment, it just, it, it rings so true. That's, that's part of, that, that is DNA right there. Totally. Well, I could tell you if you were uh, uh, at, a, at a bar, if it was a year ago at Star Wars Celebration, Joseph Scrimshaw would toast you, as, as would I, but uh, he'd clink a glass over that. He loves the Luke, I care moment. Right. And I think it ties directly to this Ray moment. It's, it's about the spirit of who they are and spirit of the Jedi. Ray, all the way through, what's, what's one of the first things Ray does when we meet her? She, she doesn't just save BB-8. She fixes an, his antenna, right? That, that's the right. save the cat kind of moment, to, to borrow the screenwriting term. Like, and that goes all the way through, and, and, and that is Ray's character, and, and she is in tune to all that stuff. One of my favorite moments, it's, it's not on my list. I don't want this to count. I don't want it to count. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah. We'll let it we'll uh, let <laughs> but it's 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 a beautiful moment where where while they're talking about to three PO about doing what he needs to do to erase his memory there in in, in Babu Frick's uh, workshop, and 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 Ray just simply says three PO you more oh. than anyone know the odds like what a powerful not, it's not just a callback it's not a nostalgia pull it is the entire series no one has paid attention to three PO yes. whether we want to believe it or not yes but Ray has mm-hmm. because Ray cares because mm-hmm. Ray's in tune Ray is about celebrating life she's about saving life she's about those little typey things that's why I love in uh, Last Jedi when she sees BB-8 what's the first thing she does Chicks is in yeah your Tana still looks yeah. good like that's her spirit that's why I love the stuff uh, the Aki Aki mm. Festival of the Ancestors uh, which was a whole sequence pretty much designed to show yes. Ray uh, joy and let her experience joy, but to show her what the, what she's fighting for—the kids and and the smiles and laughter and things she didn't get to experience—it it all comes down to that to those little moments. I think I think you've selected a great moment here. Um, it's a power, it's a fun moment between Zori and Ray, just so they're not you know we we cut down the cut out the fight between them right away. Mm-hmm. We don't need that, but but it it, it does say a lot about Ray and what, and what she's there for. Right, Karen Man, and and. Gosh, now you're making me think I should have put that 3PO moment down because that is a great moment. Like the whole, <laughs> no one pays attention to C3PO, man. Nope. That is, that's amazing. Yeah, no, Ray, Ray, uh, we, we had a thing during our Bombad buildup, Ken, where we said that Qui-Gon Jinn was the most Jedi Jedi to ever Jedi. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, I, I think Ray usurps him at this point. I mean, she's just, Ray I think mm. Qui-Gon is sitting there. I mean, he tell, I mean, Qui-Gon talks to Ray. He doesn't talk to anybody else. He talks to Ray, yeah. so I think Qui Gon's up in Force Heaven, going like, "All right, I, think, I like that kid." I think, 
I think you're right. I think it's it's I think it's Qui Gon and Ahsoka by by hair, and they're both proud of. Yes. Oh yeah, they're like yeah, girl, yes queen, yes queen. There you go. <laughs> Qui Gon saying that. Yes. Could you you're imagine? Yes queen. I can't do. I don't know if I can do a, a good uh, Liam Neeson, but uh, yeah. I, I won't attempt it any longer. So, uh, yeah. Scotty, what's your next moment? Um, or what do you think? What do you think about Did you say what you said? No, no. But there, <laughs> I, I don't I know. There's I not – there's really not much more I can add. I did love that moment when it happened because, like, the way they framed it, too, was so cool with, like, she's pointing down and she's oh, in the really shot with her and, with the lightsaber? Oh, yeah. And then she's holding up it's and beautiful. then, like – you know, you you see from each perspective, which is something Star Wars never does, which is like first person point of view, and like you literally see the lights that are getting pointed at the screen. You know, from Zori's perspective, and then once races that line, and then it cuts immediately to Zori saying the next line, and I'm like, that's just so cool because it's just a, I don't know, Rise of Skywalker did a lot of weird things with the camera that I think no other Star Wars movie has done, and that was one of them. That was one of them, and the other one. I want to mention very quickly is when C3 was like, you know, I, I just want to let you know you're my best friend before he walks out of shot. And it's like that weird overhead shot of C3PO and R2D2. Freaking awesome. I think it's the best shot in the sequel yeah. trilogy because mm. it's so unique. But mm. yeah, that, that nice. it's just the, the idea of that moment too. They're all in kind they're all, you can obviously tell it's like Nazi Germany, you know, being invaded in France, you know, they're finding the Jews everywhere and stuff. It's mm. just like, it's an intense moment mm. to think that, uh, an, cause when you're first watching like another enemy, like, Oh God, they got all this on top of it. But for it to be twisted very quickly because of what Ray does and no one else does, it's just – it's kind of a weird hero moment for her because she's the one that kind of handles it, whereas Poe gets them into it, which is pretty cool. I don't know. Right. I, I think it's kind and, of a cool and twist. Just, you know, Scott, you and, and Joseph talk about how no Jakanka needs to become a Star Wars fan <laughs> quote, and I, I am 100% on that train, man. That is the <laughs> – one of the best Poe lines ever. No Jakanka. <laughs> it's no so Jakanka. good. Uh, that, just that whole sequence is amazing. So, yeah. Scotty, what's your next one, bud? Um, let me see. I, I, we're boiling down to the last two. I went a little out of order. Um, I'm going to kind of take a step back because Revenge of the Sith, we haven't mentioned Revenge of the Sith yet, have we? I don't think we have. There's one moment. We talked that about I, the, the like fighter moments and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Like, not, not but much. like no truly. Much. Like, I think it's after Anakin kills a Separatist, wherever he is, like, crying, and, like, he just did that, you know? And his his mm. his red eyes are gone. Like, it's so cool to think, like, he's killing the Separatist with these red demon eyes, and then the red eyes are gone. He's looking at the, the, the sun being obscured by really dark clouds. It's, like, almost the antithesis of what Luke experiences, you know? when he does experience the the staring off into the sunset moment. Like, it's just a really Ooh, interesting like a parallel. Like a dark twist on it. Yes, yeah. because, Ooh, like, wow, wow. this 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 horrible future you have just made for yourself, this little glimmer of light is going to be gone. Like, you, you shouldn't have done... You took it... He not only took it too far, but, like, to the truly the point of no return, <laughs> you know? And so right. we think. So we think. Then, of course, his son brings him out of it. But that's... It is like the... Pretty much, and it's almost framed very similar to just like he's looking at this sun being obscured by clouds. That that moment, and he's crying like he he knows what he did, and it's it's beautiful because in most movies, when a character goes bad, they're like I'm bad, and that's it. Like I'm just an evil person, you know, and like I don't know, and and a lot of it can be played with and and messed around with, but this is the one time where it's like, damn, like I I did this just to save Padme, and. And literally as he's doing that, that ship flies in and he has to go handle that situation and he does not handle it well <laughs> at all. It's the worst way to end, uh, to uh, kind of start and end a fight, I think. Choking out your, your girlfriend with the force. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely not – that's that's how an episode of Cops begins, I yes. believe. So that's that's where that goes. Tro- troops. Yeah, yeah. Tro- <laughs> but, troops. Um, that is a – I, I wanted to joke with you, Scott, and be like, wow, Debbie Downer, thanks uh, bringing us down a little bit there. But I did the, I did the whole thing with, with Luke and his destroyed home, so it's fine. It's yeah. fine. I'll allow it. But yeah. that – I never have thought about it that way when – the way you said, like, with the – it be almost being like an anti-version of Luke looking at the sunset. 
uh, because we, I don't, did we really get anything like that with Anakin in a fa- the Phantom Menace? Like him looking, like we just, he just wanted to go. He, he was like, oh, away. cool, Jedi. I want to be a Jedi. Um, yeah. Just to have that be like the dark antithesis of, of Luke's. I'm staring at a sunset, but it's not a good sunset. Um, mm-hmm. There's not adventure. There's this, the adventure ahead of me is, is dark and, um, I don't know. Just that's a man. Great. That, that's such a, a, a great analysis that Scott, because I never quite thought of that like that. Yeah. I think it's, no, it's great. It's heavily intended. I, I feel can any, any perspective mm. on that? Any wisdom? I, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I don't know if I ever have any of that, but I'll say I've watched Star Wars a lot and enough <laughs> to know that, yeah, I think you're right that, that Lucas loves it. You know, we, we make the jokes about the Star Wars poetry. Everyone, everyone who's a Star Wars fan does. And, and I get it. And it's fun because George is a good character to, uh, uh, you know, to uh, be a character, to, to, to turn into a sketch character. But uh, it, it is true. And, and, it, and it's a lot, a lot, uh, a lot true, a lot, a lot of truth to what you're saying there about this is his, uh, the other side of uh, what his son would experience a, f- uh, a few decades later, mm-hmm. a couple decades later. And, and, it, and it's part of this tapestry of uh, the fall of Vader for me. Uh, the, that leads to a lot of great moments along the way. I love the final moment with the, the mask coming down mm. because it is the last times it, he's trapped in there. Final. He's tra- his mistakes. And this is what George's big lesson of, of the prequels with Anakin was literally saying to the 12 year olds, like, you, you you have choices in life. And by the way, if you make some choices, you can't come back from them. Mm. Or if you do, it's going to be a long, hard road, road and, and you, are a, 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 you are trapped by your mistakes unless you reverse them, unless you actively work to reverse them. Um, it leads to what you're talking about links to uh, because he's crying mm. and there's a lot of emotions and it could be a lot of things he's talking about. I think a lot of it does revolve around Padme and a lot of it about what have I done and is this worth it? And he's he's take he's making this bet based on this lie sold to him by palpatine i think he knows it he knows that the the infamous no moment as silly as it might have looked on screen you got to go to the why of that scene and he he, he's been sold a lie and he realizes it and that thus starts the battle between him and palpatine from from there to the end of their life um uh so as we know it, as we know it, uh, um, uh, uh, different discussion, and it, I still think uh, the balance was found there. But um, uh, one of my favorite moments is in is in Rebels with Ahsoka and Vader fa- facing oh, off the end of season two. Amazing. And I always oh, you, you probably hear me talk about mm-hmm. it, but it's like when that when that helmet cracks, when Vader's helmet cracks, and you hear uh, Vader say Ahsoka, it is oh, the voice God. of Anakin, yeah, and it is the eye of Anakin, and it is him for a moment peeking out behind that wall he's been trapped behind, and Ahsoka right there in that moment, oh, she almost succeeds in bringing him back, as the way I interpret it, and he's yeah. right there for a moment, but the war goes on, and he slays Anakin in that moment, uh, and, and he'll fight, Vader will fight with Anakin again, we know, um, and I think it goes to that kind of moment, because that stuff doesn't go away, just mm-hmm. because the man Mask is on him. Mm. He's still having those thoughts. He's still playing around with it, and, and uh, yeah, I think it's a great building block, bl- building block for great Vader moments, Anakin moments to come. Mm. Totally, Absolutely. totally. Ken, you got another special one you want to throw at us? Yeah, look, there's some some runner ups. I was going to talk about Tally Lintra, the eyes of Leia, Cloud Riders arriving, oh. uh, Han and Chewie uh, punching it, oh, uh, nice. even some pod racing. Lando and Rise of Skywalker, but if this is uh, my final choice here, uh, I'm going to go with one uh, that that is came out in Force Awakens 2015. Um, but I have only my growth. Uh, I've grown to appreciate it more and more and more, and now it's one of my favorite moments. And I think that's a testament to Star Wars. You can continue to go back to Star Wars and get more, and you can also get more once the story plays out and once you know more uh, uh, to the, the the different chapters of these characters' lives and the saga overall. And it is it is Han's in Han's final moments. Um, mm. There is the moment that you know when when I was so uh, Han's my Han's my guy, and so when he died, I was I was disappointed. I I knew it was coming. I just mm. knew from this angle of eh, eh, I can't imagine Harrison coming back and not killing him off. And and there's been things where Harrison's like I didn't, I didn't say that. No, right. <laughs> whatever. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just as as a fan, as a fan, you're like I just got I just think Han's gonna go. 
so already your expectations are there, and then it starts to happen, so you're kind of like, oh, I saw this coming, whatever. And we get lost in that. This is why mm-hmm. I don't like watching these things uh, from that perspective. I like, as Joseph always tells us, engage with the story presented to us. But I missed it because I got caught up in it. And the specific moment is where he sees Kylo. He sees Kylo on the walkway. He chooses to engage him. He chooses to go after him because that's what Leia has sent him to do. Go and get our son. Uh, he, we know that going back to the very beginning of Han's life, at least what we see on screen in Solo, he thinks he's something else. He wants to be something else. He can't go against his nature, but he always does, and he always runs away. He always turns his back on things. And then he'll come back, and, and, and it plays out time and time again. It, it, it's, it's his blessing and curse for 40 years of, of storytelling. And it ends up being what uh, undoes him, it leads mm-hmm. to his death, but as we learn now from Rise of Skywalker, that death saved the galaxy, and that death was the completion of the mission. When when he and Leia are arguing, and she says, "You got to go get him," and he's like, "I can't." Luke couldn't do anything. Well, how could I do it? She's like, "You're his father," oh, and that is his his goal. That is his purpose. And and on Takadana, he literally sees Kyle. He could have done it then. Yep. He ran away. Yeah. He ran away. Han always runs away. Uh, he ran away after New Hope. There's a, a common misconception, unless you read the novel growing up. Han is not part of the Rebel Alliance until midway through Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. He is not. He's Captain Solo of the Millennium Falcon, not Captain of the Rebel Alliance. Right. Um, it, it is. He accepts it. General Solo, that's why Leia turns to him like, oh, my gosh, you're in this fight. I think I love you even more now. <laughs> um so Han's always trying to be who he thinks he is, who he wants to be, because it's easier. And I think in that moment, he chooses to complete a bunch of missions in his life. And it leads to not just the redemption of his son, but in a way, the, the uh, sa- saving the galaxy yeah. with his compassion in that moment. But it starts with that moment. It's underrated in that sequence. Oh, absolutely. It means more to me now in 2020 than it did in 2015. And that is him just going, I, I have to go to this fight. I have to go to my son. And that's why I love that moment. It's amazing. Wow. It's like it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I'm close with my dad and I'm, I'm sure it, it's, I think it's a thing that most men have to experience, like seeing your dad become vulnerable for your very first time. You know, it could be at your grandfather's mm-hmm. funeral. It could be any situation, but like Han had to expose his vulnerability for the first time in front of his child. And it was to bring him back. And like, I, I, God, such a beautiful way to put it, Ken, because you you almost don't realize it when you first watch it, then when you watch it again. But it's one of those things you really have to sit on. You have to really think about that, like how much courage it took for him to have to actually do that. He is a runner, and it's very obvious mm. from Solo all the way through. And it's amazing that they even brought him back in The Rise of Skywalker to make sure they solidify that choice he made in the force awakens it just brought it just completed the whole little moment it's like the opposite of what would have happened you know and uh Mm. yeah that's that's beautiful truly it is it's great and just that whole it it is so underrated and it's like especially after rise of skywalker with god bless his heart harrison coming back and basically redoing that scene the whole the hand touch of the face and everything mm-hmm. the hand touch of the face gets me now more than it ever has yeah. uh, and again mm-hmm. i'm not trying to like i know like sometimes people be like play the, the like i'm a father card and stuff but just like being a father and like i, I actually was trying to sort of explain that to my two and a half year old my almost three year old the other day because we were watching it and i was like you know yeah he hurt his daddy but even though he upset his daddy and hurt him uh his daddy still loves him and forgives him mm-hmm. and it really I, it was in that moment i kind of just like wow um that's a big it's a big mm-hmm. moment when you realize there's a wall you you hit when you are you become an adult and you realize oh wow my parents were just people and they were just yeah. as scared as I was. And I mean, life, life is scary, you know, and just like that, the whole antithesis of, th- of Han being the guy that runs and, and just, f- I don't know, the, the finding out for the first time that you're, you're, you're you know, your parents care, mm-hmm. but that mm-hmm. like, they're not running, like, I don't know. And not everyone, I guess, has a relationship like where their father runs off to become a spice runner or whatever, a, a smuggler. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, and you join a, a totalitarian government uh, just out of spite. It's a little less. It's dial it back from eleven, but right. uh, 
just I, I think you have those moments where you're like, well, do they even care? And and just you mm. have those vulnerable. Just the first vulnerable moment is, uh, man, it, it's full of a lot of emotions for sure. So that's a great pull, Kent, for sure. That is that's a, a great underrated moment and. Uh, man, it's one of my favorites of the sequel trilogy too. Just that whole sequence. It also uh, broke me. I I broke down and ugly cried in the movie theater. I also, (laughs) fun fact, I came down with a cold. I think I've sold this on the show before, but just Ken, just so you know, I I basically was getting a cold through the entire movie, The Force Awakens. I was fine when I got there. (laughs) By the time I left, I had a fever my wife had to drive. But like whenever no. Han, I don't know if it was that I was like so delirious, I straight up sh- like shaking, ugly cried, like I'm like, <laughs> like not making noise because again I don't want to be a jerk. But like, and my yeah. my wife literally, literally, Allison looks at me, Scott, and and she goes, "Are you okay?" And it wasn't a, I care about you and okay. It's like. Am I going to have to like you you are really like like it's a fictional character are you going to are you going to be all right like, you recover. like it was like a um dude are like this didn't show up whenever I signed you know the 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 marriage certificate yeah. so uh oh. but anyway it's I don't know man like that that is it's such an underrated moment so uh brilliant um well you know what I'm going to just give my uh couple of uh of Honorable mentions. Uh, honorable mentions, man, before cool. I go into it. Uh, w- one of them is like a real quick, just a line that I love, just a whole, like, in TLJ, whenever the Falcon shows up on Crate, it's amazing. And I, I'm, I'm sure all of us love, but endlessly, I, I have to stop and watch whenever those three ties get destroyed and then oh, everyone's great. cheering and yeah. Kylo, uh, you know, Ren's like, blast that piece of junk out of the sky, you know, and I, like, it's almost one word. I, I wrote yeah. it as an all caps, <laughs> like, smushed together. Yeah. It's one word. Out of the sky! And yep. that moment is great, just that he calls it a piece of junk and stuff. I'm sure he heard his dad call it that. You know, fastest mm-hmm. hunk of junk of the galaxy, Uncle Lando, Uncle Wando, and stuff and all that. Mm. But uh, just, I don't know, that's just such a good like fist pumping moment and stuff. Also, uh, honorable mention in that scene, uh, Finn going, Oh, they hate that chip is amazing too. So, uh, that it's, that it's known in the first. Yeah. Order. <laughs> yeah that it's known. It's like, I love that. It's more known now. It's like, ah, oh, great. The Falcons here. Uh, great. okay. Yeah. Well, recalculate here. Well, here we go. What are we going to do? Um, but mm. that moment. And also the, uh, Kanan versus the grand inquisitor duel oh. at the end has always Wild. been for me. I consider it one of the best lightsaber duels in all of Star Wars. I love just the emotions of it and the, mm-hmm. the say what you will about the animations and stuff. Uh, I, I think it's amazing. It's beautiful. It looks great. But just the emotion of that scene, uh, and it's, I know this is an honorable mention, but the, the Grand Inquisitor taunting him with, uh, like after he, you know, thinks that Ezra's dead, and he goes, you know, like, uh, or he's like, that was a mistake. Why? Because you have nothing, no one left to die for you? No, because now I have nothing left to fear is one of the best well, lines. That's badass. I'm not that lie. is like, that is like, and I love that I, Kanan 100% should have been, he deserved that spot. Freddie Prince Jr., bless his heart, mm-hmm. uh, deserved that spot in Rise of Skywalker. Yes. And, and I, that, I, th- like, that whole sequence of Ray even could be a, mm-hmm. I don't, that's not even, that's a podcast episode all of its own. Um, that whole moment of the Jedi uh, telling Ray to get up is amazing. And, and Kanan a hundred percent deserves to be on that like roster of a list Jedi, if you ask me. So, um, absolutely. But beyond all the honorable mentions and, and you know, all the, the tears that I've shed tonight, uh, <laughs> One of the best moments, one of my favorite moments in all of Star Wars, and it's a little bigger of a moment, uh, but I love in Return of the Jedi when you cut back from the, you know, the ground battle, the space battle, you cut back towards the very end, we're the tail end of the battle for the soul of the galaxy between Luke and uh, Vader, and Vader's just basically trying to goad Luke out from hiding. 
just this whole moment. I love to go back to like listen to the, that moment on the score too, because it's a long buildup of like Vader just really trying to goad Luke. You know, like talking about how you know Obi Wan was why you know blah blah blah. Like, but the, when he gets just the fact that when he gets to uh, like he feels in that moment is when he discovers. At least I feel like in canon that is the moment he discovers. Oh, you have a sister. sister. Um, mm. well now, what was it? Uh, now Obi-Wan's failure is complete. Just that whole thing, you know? And so if you won't turn to the dark side, then perhaps she will. Luke coming out of hiding from that, that is what gets his anger. Mm. It's like, oh. you're not going to like, yeah. it's, it's Luke's, it's a Jedi. It's mm. almost Jedi in that he wants to protect his sister, but it's so mm. it's Luke's downfall. It's yep. Luke's, you know, it, it, it's Typical Luke's, Luke. um, fatal flaw that he is so uh like impulsive in the moment impulsive yeah. and stuff and he's he just that get comes out behind and no and just that whole sequence until he finally cool. beats vader to the ground and cuts his arm off that whole sequence just mainly them under there up until the the no but the the music the building up to it john williams is a, a treasure and i i I don't know. I'm uh, I'm sad he's done a little bit, but I'm also like happy that he got to finish things out. <laughs> um, but just what a master! At, like music and stuff. The first time we had uh, or, it, that was like Return of the Jedi is the first time we really had uh, orchestral or like not orchestral. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, like vocals, yeah. right? Yeah, choral in in yeah. there, and that just the whole yep. like the emperor. It, it just. That theme is is so underrated to mm-hmm. me. Like that piece of music from when Luke jumps out to Vader, it's so mm-hmm. like melancholy and and just uh, uh, you feel every emotion in that music, and, and it, it is just I don't know. It, it's beautiful, heartbreaking, and it's it's a yeah get him moment at first, but then you're like wait 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 okay. You just you just played into the emperor's mm-hmm. hand, and and you're doing what he wants, and he realizes it's just everything about that moment. I'm falling apart emotionally <laughs> now, um, so that to me is probably my top yeah moment of this. This is what this whole story is about. Mm-hmm. It's about this making the right decision. It's it's making mistakes and realizing I need to, I need to make this right. Yeah. Um, and I know we could just talk for hours about the end of return of the Jedi. And like from there on the whole, I'm a Jedi, like my father before me, but I I turn it over to you gentlemen, because this is, we're getting a little long in the tooth now. So, uh, (laughs) go on, go on. Yeah. I, uh, for me, that whole sequence, the throne room and return of the Jedi is like my favorite sequence in star Wars. and, And I love a lot of, other things that nip at the heels of that, but it is it, everything described. It's the visuals. It's the music. It is um, the decision uh, of of Luke to choose that to come out and, and to uh, start to give into his anger uh, and, and leading to his big lesson and, and and his victory over violence and that leads to his redemption. It, uh, they're one of my favorite little moments because I love so many Palpatine moments. But the you meant you know I'm a Jedi like my father before me and, mm. and Palpatine's so be it Jedi. Like I did, oh, yeah. I, I just I've <laughs> always love that moment, and it's so chilling. It's so just good. like because it's it's as if Palpatine saying like, <laughs> "All right, well, yep, you are a Jedi, and you're gonna die, a yeah. Jedi." Uh-huh. And it is kind of because this is Luke's trials to me. This is Luke's Jedi trials because he doesn't have a formal right. a, mm-hmm. academy or order to attend or Jedi school, you know. So it all feeds into that moment. But yeah, even below the stairs, and it's I was just rewatching the. Uh, uh, the uh, from Star Wars to Jedi documentary on uh, StarWars.com, which yeah, uh, mm. on Star Wars Show and Tell on Force Center's YouTube channel, I I have the VHS tape I had in '89 for oh, that. Nice. And I was sharing that and talking about it, and there's great stuff in there. And and George was talking about that moment. And George was like, you know, we didn't have a moment in the script for Luke to jump out. We just said Vader says something that upsets him. Wow. And we were on set. We were mm. like, ah, oh, you know, let's let's try Leia. It'd be Leia, right? That that would work. So here's this wow big giant moment. Moment in Star Wars, big giant moment in canon, right? Yeah. And, it, and it's yeah. the filmmakers fi- and, and the actors figuring this out wow. on Darn. set. 
um, <laughs> which is always interesting to remember uh, those kind of moments versus uh, the uh, they should have planned it all out. Uh, that's not how filmmaking is <laughs> yes. done. And um, yeah. and to have that powerful moment because uh, they're all feeling the characters in that scene in that moment as they're making it. I, I love it even more because of that. So yeah. great choice. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's oh, I love it so much. And yeah, we wouldn't have. Yeah, like you said, uh, I can We wouldn't have the I love you. I know line without a little bit of riffing and stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I know that's not important to the whole story. But yeah, there you go. Uh, who cares about a big who cares about the big battle plan, man? Let's just make some good uh, film that's going to make us feel things. Yes. So, Scott, go ahead, Scott. Well, just to, to kind of close out what you just said, Jerry, the, the fact that like the music within itself is so it's choral. And I didn't think about it. that's the first one I was ever used. And like it sounds mm-hmm. like it sounds it's a weird analogy, but it sounds like a 1940s recording. And this sounds old. It's mm-hmm. like. This beautifully done, like, like the voices are all trembling and it's huge. And, like, in the way it's shot, it goes from dark to light. And he is just, like, slash and slash, slash, slash. And then it cuts to, like, kind of Vader just receiving the end of it. And then, yeah, it it that ending is just phenomenal. And and that's what triggers the, the anger. It's just like being Luke being impulsive in TLJ with the lightsaber over Ben. Mm. That's one of those moments, like... That's where Luke obviously has his character flaws, as all heroes do. And that moment was the first time you really see it besides him being naive in Empire Strikes Back. You know, that was the first time you're like, oh, man, Luke actually kind of made a mistake there. You know, he tapped that dark side within him. Great point, Jerry. Great. Fantastic. Um, Thank you. I have a few. I have a few in the chamber. (laughs) My uh, my two honorable mentions, uh, the R2 Naboo escape when they're escaping Naboo. Amazing, like just like they're leaving for the first oh, such time. Such a fun sequence, oh, man. man. And R2, you know, hello, boyos. And then they all like say hi, Jar Jar. And they all get in the thing and they go up and <laughs> there's get picked off one by one by <laughs> one by one. And then R2's there and he's just the only one that's like, I, I guess I got to do this. And, you know, he successfully does it and they shields come back up and they get the <laughs> hell out of there. It's amazing. It's and the music is huge. And I don't know. I, I'm very fond of that moment. And, uh, my other one, I don't know if I'm going to switch them around now. I think I might, guys. Um, I originally had the climax of TLG, oh. TLJ with the supremacy, you know, all three of the storylines finally meeting up. And then, you know, um, Adam Aholdo mm-hmm. does the does the maneuver and just wipes out the supremacy. Like, truly, that was just one oh, of those. Beautiful. Just it's the yeah. it's the thing I like in Star Wars. It's the combination of stories all into one, and and how it builds and why it builds that way is just so well done. And then everything after that's perfect. But um, my my last one I want to end on is Luke lifting the X wing in the Rise of Skywalker. Just like mm-hmm. the parallels and the beauty of the moment. And you know, I I'm I'm a pretty emotional person. Ken, I don't know if you ever seen it. There's a reaction video of me on the internet and it's got like 2.1 million views. It's like super popular and like we're still getting hate comments to this mm-hmm. day. But I'm I cry when I see the Rise <laughs> of Skywalker trailer for the first time and like, you know, it's yeah. I'm pretty emotional and that moment in the theaters was like I love the Yona moment, don't get me wrong, but that just took that moment and just completed Luke's story, you know, like, and I love TLJ, but it really just like, it was almost done at the end of TLJ. Then they just finalized it when he lists up that, that exact X wing in, in, Mm -hmm. in Octo's Mm -hmm. waters. And just Ray is hopeful again. Everything is just, he, he course corrects her, you know? And I think that's what Yoda did for Luke too later. I don't know. I'm, I can talk about it forever, but yeah, that is, that is one of those moments that, I think really did affect me personally. No, it, you know what's funny? I now, now I now remember seeing you cry. Good yes. on you, man. I yeah. now remember that video. Um, that's a lot of people have so seen familiar. him cry. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, that's good. And look, I uh, I um, I cried uh, uncontrollably through most of Rise of Skywalker, my first, second, and third viewings yeah. at, at different times. Uh, yeah. Just because of what it meant for me, just outside of the story as a fan, as my whole life, and blah, blah, blah. You, you can list all the reasons, and people can make fun of it all they want. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll still mm-hmm. cry. Um, that moment got me a lot mm-hmm. in, the, in, the, in the theater the first time because of uh, what it means, because Luke had submerged it on Octo and didn't want to didn't want to lift it up. And then as it's it's just so plainly stated it's just so this is this is what luke couldn't do in empire he couldn't lift it no, he couldn't no yoda had to do it 
And now here he is. He's doing it. He's truly, his journey's complete. He his, 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 uh you know, it's it's that circle, it's that poetry again. But uh, Last Jedi, uh, it does you know, it's it's my favorite um, of the new movies, and and uh, I right. love what they do with Luke. But this is that final little, yeah, this is he is accepted because that's part of the lessons. I keep talking about this. It's like, like I don't, I don't care how Palpatine came back or not. Like, yes. I, you, right. it all works. It's all part of his contingency plan. If you need the canon checklist, go for it. Exactly, he came it's back. the character. Yeah, yeah it's he the Palpatine's came back. character. Yeah, he came back because the Sith don't let go. The Sith yeah. don't let go, mm-hmm. and Luke let go, and he moved on to the next chapter of his life, mm-hmm. the next plane of his existence, and and that completed his journey, completed it, and now he's you know experiencing other things uh, with Leia in the afterlife. You know, they're, yep. they're brother and sister reunited, but going to the to the to the moment and to use the same music oh, again. The theme killed me, and Yoda's theme, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> you know, me. as I as I wrote about. Yeah, I did. I wrote. I, I wrote about it in the book, but it's like Yoda's theme is the sound of enlightenment in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. It's the sound of comfort, home, and learning. You're a teacher, you know. It's mm-hmm. the sound of learning, mm-hmm. and and it, it and anytime you hear Yoda's music, you're going home again. You're going to that safe spot with your teacher, your mentor, and where you where your lessons are and how you can learn to be a better you. And 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 to see it all play out like that, I'm right there with you. I, I was. I think um, the first screening we saw it down at uh, the El Capitan, and Scrimshaw was behind me, and that was one of the moments where he just reached out and tapped me oh. on the shoulder. <laughs> you know? You grab um, the kneecap, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's great, and, and, and you know, and then we we stepped out of the theater, and all my colleagues were getting ready to get their hate tweets going because yeah. uh, it's <laughs> where they what's the world they live in, not yeah. the one I live right. in. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm right there with you. I'll cry with you, <laughs> man. I I know I've been like you know very emotional and like uh deep on a lot of this stuff but I, let me share with you guys and save your rotten fruit to throw at me until the end on a journey that I this took me on this took me on a journey this was the first time I think I had something where I at first um and Scott we've talked about this before where I I there was something about it that like I, I had a couple little things in it that I was like okay I get it it's Luke lifting the x-wing and stuff um, I think I had a moment where I like, I didn't really care for the face. He, I was like, it looks like he's like in a 1980s sitcom. Like, <laughs> whoops. Yeah. Look what I did. Um, I, I promise it's coming back around. Don't, 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 don't leave look yet guys. Ken, stay, stay, Ken. No, oh, um, no. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and then, um, I learned that I shouldn't take, th- this was a learning experience for me. I learned I shouldn't take, this is the moment where I was like, oh, I shouldn't take things so I shouldn't be like so serious, but, uh, <laughs> I learned that I also shouldn't take Pablo Hidalgo's, uh, uh, visual dictionaries seriously <laughs> because that part about the X wing door, like the, the, yeah. the door of his, his hut. And I know they kind of explained a little bit in the, uh, in the novelization. Again, this wasn't a huge sticking point for me at all. Um, that was my initial viewing. My initial viewing, I was like, but wait, that was the door. Mm-hmm. And I realized, I, I realized how dumb I sounded. I realized I sound like the people talking about, and again, if it, if it's not your thing, the bombs falling in space, God bless your heart. If that doesn't work for you, it's okay. We can go to a, a focus group together, you know, a, a group together and we'll, we'll talk our feelings out, but some good I, counseling. To the, I'm to the point now where like, and I, it helped me to talk about it with you, Scotty. I did yeah. the first two back-to-back viewings of my entire life mm-hmm. of a Star Wars film I've never seen mm-hmm. with Rise of Skywalker. Talked to no one about it until the next day I talked to you, Scotty. Mm-hmm. And, and I started to deal with my feelings, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. I love that moment now. It's so good. It means so much to Ray's journey. It means so much to... It, well, it means so much to... It's, it's, the, it's 100% uh, what Luke... It's the finishing of his arc. Yeah. It's the it's the yeah. I this is the moment you all we that I needed to pass, and here we are, man. I'm this is the full circle for me, and uh, I'm gonna do this to help you, Ray. I'm gonna I'm doing this is for this is for you, and I just I I do love it, and it's it like I look back on how I kind of reacted at first, and I'm a little like you know, man, this is exactly why, this is exactly why you need to like take this stuff. You need to go outside, take a walk. Um, currently maybe just, you know, maybe around your backyard, find (laughs) an unpopulated area, you know, but just like go out on your back porch, get some fresh air. 
uh, walk back in and you're going to be okay. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all right. But that seriously with Yoda's theme, the way hearing you, the way you guys talk about it too, it, it is such a beautiful moment. It's such a great moment. Um, and it leads to one of my favorite moments for Rise of Skywalker, and that is when they get Luke's uh, call sign. Oh, like, oh, Master, that's, that's Luke's ex- Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. And then it cuts to the shot of Rey driving, going through whatever that red madness is <laughs> on her way to Exegol with Luke's helmet on, just in the X-Wing. And talk about shots we never thought we would get that we <laughs> never knew we needed that we thought that's fan fiction for me but holy crap that's amazing that we have that in real life um i love that so yeah. again okay i'm done you can throw the fruit whatever you want at me and stuff i just said <laughs> i i had to share that journey that i went with that but that's such a great that is a great pool scott and i, I that's a great moment and it, you could say again that that is that is Almost a great moment to end on, too, because it's so uh, this is like the DNA of Star yeah. Wars is that like a, a moment like that it, where it connects back to the past, but is pushing the new generation forward. Yep. Beautiful job, gentlemen. Indeed. This was great. Um, Kid, did you have any anything else you want to mention before we close this whole discussion out? No, no, there's just too many moments to list, man. And, <laughs> and, and, and this is why. You know, when it comes to like even ranking the films, I, I, it's it it changes every day. Yeah. It changes every yeah. day because Star Wars is just this big wonderful thing. So, well, this yeah. this and is now we have all this time to rewatch Star Wars. <laughs> yes. So you know we're, we're probably finding new moments. So, you know by the by the hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I wish I had the time, but yes, I I, I definitely oh, right. <laughs> put them on in the background. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, like I yeah. I say I do, but I have a three-year-old, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good luck to you. Good luck to you, sir. Um, thank you. Thank you. Boys, this has been amazing. Ken, thank you so much for joining, man. Serious, this has yeah, been a, uh, such a pleasure for coming a on, man. Thank total you. pleasure. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Ken, if you, if you don't mind, can you get your little plugs in for, uh, for what, what's going on with you in this sure. world? Sure. If you want to listen to uh, me and Joseph Scrimshaw and uh, Jennifer Landa on the older episodes and, and future episodes when she uh, is clear from uh, her uh, uh, newborn, well, actually a little less, a uh, little more than newborn now, uh-huh. um, uh, it's uh, uh, her young Padawan, uh, go over to Four Center. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Four Center Pod, uh, about three to, uh, yeah, about three episodes a week now. Uh, we're doing the Clone Wars Report uh, and uh, the main show on Tuesdays and then Star Wars Ranked on uh, Thursday. Uh, YouTube channel as well. If you want to pick up my book, Why We Love Star Wars, you can go get it wherever books are sold, or you can go to directly to my website where you can get a signed, a personalized Ooh, signed copy directly nice. from me at catnapsock.com. Com. Uh, and then if you go to the website, you'll find out all the other things I'm doing. One thing I just uh, am about to, it's, it's out there. You can find it and subscribe and get ready for it. But it's about two, three weeks away from launching. Ooh. And that is a, a baseball podcast called Box Score Heroes. Uh, oh, nice. Because before um, I started talking about Star Wars uh, professionally, all I did was uh, dream about baseball. So uh, <laughs> I'm finally going to merge the two together. And Box, scores, uh, Box Score Heroes will be a baseball podcast feed coming from me very soon. That is awesome. Awesome. Oh, perfect. We uh we know John Hoey at the Resistance Broadcast and Star Wars Newsnet. He's a big star. He's a big uh, Star Wars guy, of course. He's a big baseball guy too. So I don't know if you're yeah. looking for guests, but I'm sure he would probably do it too, man. He's he's absolutely he loves absolutely. baseball. Yeah, I'm, that's awesome, man. That's that's yeah. cool. A new adventure for you. That's badass. That's the one with the yeah. bats, right? That's the <laughs> bat one. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. That's, that's me. <laughs> no, seriously. Thank you so much for coming on, Ken, and and just. Such a, a pleasure, like talking talking with you about this subject, man. Because it's it's uh, it's just the 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 things that we that keep us awake in the best way mm-hmm. at night. So, <laughs> yeah. but thank you so much for coming on, man. Seriously, my pleasure. Thanks for having of me. Of course, Jerry, get our plugs in. I heard Paul come through the door earlier, so he I think he might oh, want to do the crap. sign out. I know. Make I... sure make sure he stays out right now. We're 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 trying to talk with someone here. But uh, we, we've got – guys, if you want to keep up with us, you can find me and Scotty at our uh, personal pages. You can follow us, uh, Scotty at the Scotty J. Rowe. Mm-hmm. You can follow me at the Cannon Junkie. Uh, you can follow the Bombat Cast at Bombat Cast and, you know, pretty much just type that, uh, type that little word Bombad Cast into the Google machine and you will find us just about anywhere that you find um, human beings holding up inside their, their domiciles at the current moment. Uh, so, but look for us there. You can join our Bombad fam, uh, Bombad cast official group on Facebook. Uh, you know, again, 
no shade to Facebook. I know I said, th- you know, uh, shady things earlier about Facebook and stuff, but like, I love all my aunts and uncles and great aunts and uncles <laughs> and, and all them hanging out over there. So uh, it's good to see you. Uh, but anyway, guys, thank you for stopping by. And hold until on, wait. next wait, time. On, wait, 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 wait. wait what's going off. on, Scott? What we got? Oh, no. no. Did, you, did he come oh, in? Yeah, did he no. make it in? I, I think he is. Oh, God. Oh, God. How in the way, oh, people? My gosh. It's me, Pa Stanley of Kiss. I'm eating my Kiss ice cream in my Kiss pajamas, and we are Paul. we are here. And 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 thank you so much, Paul. Jerry and Scotty and Ken for oh, having me guest. on. <laughs> I am just I'm Paul. elated to be here. Everyone, Ken, give me a yeah, Ken, give me a yeah. Oh, Paul, pleasure to meet you, man. Big fan, site ninety six, Irvine Poe open for you. It was a great concert, great man. Concert. Yeah, yeah, it was a great concert. I remember that night. Remember that night? I I played a show and it was great. And uh, Jerry, how are you? Doing? <laughs> how are you doing, Jerry? I'm doing, I'm doing great. Uh, Scotty, what, what did you did you tie him up? Did you conk him over the head with a frying pan because you've taken his seat, Scott? We're trying to we're trying to end the show, Paul. Oh, uh, love you, love you. Oh, okay. But, but uh, just go. Can I end go, it? Can I end it? We're trying. Can I end it? You can. You can end it. But then you need to go uh, keep with the stay-at-home order. Okay. Uh, for Louisiana. I, okay. Okay. Come on, my man. Okay. Well, look. All right. So everybody here <laughs> in in the audience here in the studio. Um, it's not much of a studio, but it we're here. So how about this, y'all? <laughs> everybody here. Yeah, you need to go home and stay bombed. And make sure you buy the Kiss toothpaste that's recently released. <laughs>